Welcome to tonight's meeting. We will now call to order the Muskogee Municipal Authority meeting for November 9th. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Jared Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. <clears throat> Tracy Hoos. Here. <clears throat> Item number one. Consider approval of MMA minutes for October 12th, 2020. Have we had time to review the minutes on today? I'm assuming that if there are any questions or concerns, comments will be raised at this time, or do we have a motion to accept? Move for approval. Second. Motion and approval to uh, approve the minutes. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number two. Consider approval of MMA claims for the month ending October 31, 2020. Move for approval. We have a motion. Second. A second to approve the claims. Any discussion from the council? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Same. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes, the item passes. That will conclude the Muskogee Municipal Authority meeting for today. We will now call to order the Muskogee City Council meeting for Monday, November 9, 2020. Our invocation will be led by Deputy Mayor Derek Reed, followed by our flag salute. Let us all stand. Shall we pray? Dear God, our Father, we come to you tonight thanking you, first of all, for the blessing of another day. Thank you for just giving us your blessing of grace and mercy as we're traveling through this journey. Just ask that you would just look upon us tonight as the city leaders come to make decisions for our community. Lord, we just ask that you would just direct us, guide us, and lead us in your will and in your way. Bless our community and our nation as we are facing this COVID. And we just ask that you would just heal the land, bring peace all over the United States of America. These and many other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Attention. <coughs> Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. We need a motion to excuse Councilman Reynolds. Move for approval. Second. And properly moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. We will now consider the minutes for the special call city council meeting for October 19th and the regular session city council meeting for October 26th. Do we have any discussion on the minutes or a motion? Move for approval. Second. Properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now consider the consent agenda, which consists of items one through six. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda or move any of those items to the regular agenda? Move for Move. approval. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. We will now move to the regular agenda. Item number six. Uh, seven. Item number seven. Receive report on the COVID-19 pandemic in Muskogee, and if necessary, take appropriate action to authorize and approve a subsequent amendment to resolution number 2801, declaring a local emergency, or city county joint resolution number 2803. We will be conducted and narrated by Mr. Miller, but before we go into that, I'd like to read a statement. COVID-19 continues to be a growing threat to the state of Oklahoma. St. Francis Health System continues to see an increasing trend in people testing positive for COVID-19 and a higher number of hospitalizations on all campuses. 
the same is being reported for other health providers with campuses in the Tulsa regional area. Today, 60% of the patients at St. Francis Hospital Muskogee in their ICU are COVID positive. Patients must be transferred out on a daily basis from Muskogee to other hospitals around the region, including McAllister, because of a lack of staffed beds. We are at the point where doing nothing is no longer an option. And I know that doing anything is provocative. Communities are losing their courtesy of consensus in exchange for digging in their heels with a my way or no way approach, while the only thing having its way is COVID-19. Theatrics and political playbook mantras are competing for views and likes as though an Academy Award will be granted for best pandemic playwright. I said last week to this body, we need a plan that minimizes the risk of spread and keeps businesses open, particularly small locally owned businesses. Our hope that the county health department will secure support from the state health department has been diminished. Once again, the state has said to local municipalities and county jurisdictions, you're on your own. So here we stand where we are likely to hear at least three recommendations all of which need consensus to gain a vote of approval. I will recommend the following, but not call for discussion or a vote until later on during the pandemic discussion. It will be as follows. Any retail businesses located within the corporate limits of the city of Muskogee who invites, permits, or otherwise receives any member of the public into a physical building shall require face coverings be worn by all persons upon entry and while inside of their physical building. Retail businesses shall mean a business that sells products and services to a person for his or her off-premises use and shall not include restaurants. Face coverings means a uniform piece of material that securely covers a person's nose and mouth and remains affixed in place without the use of one's hands and or face shield. Face coverings should fit snugly but comfortably against the side of the face and allow for breathing without restriction. Nothing in this proposal shall prohibit a business from exempting from the following requirements. One, persons who fall into the CDC guidance for those who should not wear face coverings due to medical or mental health conditions or having a dis uh, developmental disability, and two, children under 10. Any retail business for whom this requirement will create an undue financial burden may petition for an exemption by requesting the same in writing, along with a brief explanation of the need addressed to the Office of the City Attorney, P.O. Box 1927, Muskogee, Oklahoma, 74402. All requests will be reviewed and written, and a written decision will be submitted to the retail business. If approved, this amendment will go into effect 12.01 a.m. Friday, November 13th, to give businesses time to make adjustments. Today, eight out of 10 businesses expressed to me their willingness to support this modest approach that re require masks if they knew they had the backing of the city of Muskogee. Those businesses indicated a need to see something done but feel vulnerable without city support. Two out of the 10 prefer in lieu this proposal in lieu of a more formalized ordinance. In my estimation, this is a balanced approach. It's not perfect to everyone, but it's a start. This policy amendment is better than what we underwent with our small businesses in the early days of COVID-19 where businesses and restaurants were forced to reduce their occupancy levels. If we do not act in moderation, we will be presented with a health catastrophe that may dictate policies and mandates that are far beyond our ability or control. I will read that as a recommendation as we go along in the discussion, but as for now, we'll turn this discussion over for Mr. Miller. Mike. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, forgive me, I was on uh, mute here. I do appreciate uh, 
what you've put together. I know uh, people are very concerned about what's happening with COVID-19 in our community right now, and as well they should be. Uh, we've got uh, this week, we've topped more than 300 active cases uh, in our community. And um, we have several people here that can testify to uh, what's going on in the community, including uh, our friend Doug uh, Walton from the health department and uh, Michelle Keeling from St. Francis. Before we get to those, uh, and I'll have uh, Tyler Evans, our emergency manager, kind of lead us through uh, a few different reports so that we get a, a good idea of what's going on. Mike, let me uh, interrupt you briefly. It sounds yes. muzzled on our end. If you could speak more directly into your apparatus. Absolutely. Thank you for, for letting me know. Um, so, yes, before we get into uh, the reports on our uh, specific situation here in Muskogee, uh, I did want to give you a couple of bits of information um, about how we're handling it um, from the city's uh, perspective. Uh, two things. One, uh, regarding the CARES Act, we have submitted uh, this last week was our deadline to submit um, all of our reimbursements to the state. We have received the maximum allocation from the state so far, a little bit more than $2.8 million that they allocated for the city of Muskogee. We have submitted more than $5 million more than that, uh, or approximately $5 million more than that to the state that will not be reimbursed. And so uh, I say that, number one, to give credit to staff who have been keeping track of the expenses. Uh, number two, for the benefit of the community and for the council to know um, that these are, uh, this is a, uh, a pandemic that's affecting us across uh, the city budget as well. And number three, should there be more funding available through the state or a future CARES Act um, from the federal government, um, there is a demonstrated need in Muskogee and other communities um, for additional funding to fight the pandemic. Um, secondly, this is, uh, we are having this meeting, um, with some of us participating virtually. Um, and uh, this is the last meeting that we will be able to have in such a fashion. Um, the state law uh, that amended the Open Meetings Act um, had a sunset provision. It is the 15th of this month. And so um, we've been able to, um, through this pandemic, be able to uh, have these meetings virtually where people can uh, participate, even if they are not uh, comfortable being around large groups of people in a relatively small room. And that will not necessarily be an option um, in the future, at least as far as doing it digitally. Um, we can still of course, stream them, but uh, for council members to, to be uh, present at the meeting or to be counted as a part of the quorum, they'll have to uh, be present um, and or uh, make the remote site which they're participating from open to the public. So if, for instance, if you were at your home, um, you would have to be able to invite people to uh, be at your home with you as part of the public meeting the way the law reads now. Mr. Tucker may elaborate on that as well, but I wanted to give you those two kind of updates as far as how COVID-19 is affecting us and how um, it may change how we do uh, go about doing business in the future. That being said, uh, I'm gonna ask Tyler Evans to come forward and, and give a further update on uh, statistics and, and, and introduce our guests. And good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of council. In front of you should have your uh, COVID-19 packet. You've come uh, accustomed to seeing. Uh, as of today, the city of Muskogee, uh, excuse me, city of Muskogee, if I can get it out this afternoon, it's gonna be a long day. It's currently at 318 active cases. Uh, this is the highest number of active cases we've seen thus far. Uh, Muskogee County is currently at 511 active cases. For the state of Oklahoma, 6% of ICU beds are available, 16% medical surgery beds, and 67% operating room beds are available. This is the lowest percentage of ICU beds available that I have on record uh, since I've started these reports. Um, on your second page, there is a spreadsheet type item there that lists uh, going all the way back to October, uh, August 3rd, which shows 20%, high 20s there, mid to late August and we're starting to hit the single digits uh, down here in November, 8% last week, 6% this week for available ICU beds. Uh, and I remember uh, this is not due only to COVID, but we're into flu season also. Uh, so attached in this report, a couple pages back, uh, you'll have your report, flu, uh, report for influenza-like illnesses that are seen under emergency, depart uh, emergency departments and how that's steadily increasing as time goes on. Uh, as of last Friday, Muskogee County has a 39.3 uh, cases per 100,000 in regards to testing. 
as a reminder, more than 14.29 cases per 100,000 is that threshold from counties in the yellow, the counties in the orange as far as the state map uh, is concerned. That is on page three, uh, excuse me, page four of your packet there. COVID-19 test daily percent of positive with the seven day rolling average. This has been included for the past uh, month or so. As you can see, the number of cases continue to rise there. The trend line is in the red among the blue, uh, the blue dots, which is a daily representation. Also included is the new cases and new deaths uh, by date of onset. Uh, as you can tell, it continues to rise, unfortunately. Percent of cases ever hospitalized is the following report. Along with the COVID-19 related emergency department visits, which what I was referring to just earlier, that the number or the trend line continues to rise for the number of people going to the emergency room for these influenza-like illnesses. For the uh, Washington Task Force report, Oklahoma is still in the red zone. Um, the city of Muskogee is no longer in the top 12 or Muskogee County is not in the top 12. We were there for the last couple of weeks. We got out last week. We've been battling from the red zone from them to the, the orange. We're out of that. However, they list the Muskogee Metro area or CBSA as a locality in the red zone. I had to look up what CBSA meant because I really wasn't for sure. It didn't say city, it didn't say county. And the definition given was a U.S. geographical area defined by the Office of Management and Budget that consists of one or more counties or equivalents anchored by an urban center of at least 10,000 people, which would, be, which would be Muskogee, plus adjacent counties that are social and economically tied to the urban center by commuting. So we bring uh, surrounding towns, surrounding residents and workers into the city of Muskogee. Like I said, it doesn't list cities but metro areas or CBSAs is what it was referring to and Muskogee uh, metro area was uh, in the red zone for that report. I do have a couple of guest speakers I'd like to uh, present. The first one being uh, Mr. Doug Walton from the Muskogee County Health Department. Thank you, Tyler. Good evening, Mayor, Council, to be with you. Um, as you know, I've been providing updates from the Muskogee County Health Department throughout this pandemic, and I've attempted to share information that's important in helping to guide your decisions and those of our residents. Likewise, our County Health Department and other key partners have shared info on social media, local radio, and other venues to emphasize the importance of personal actions, such as maintaining a distance of at least six feet from others whenever away from home, washing hands frequently, especially before and after eating or touching your face, wearing a face covering whenever in public to protect each other, limiting time away from home in public places, especially if you're over age 65 or have any underlying health conditions, staying at home if you are sick and calling 911 if you need immediate medical attention. I've also provided you with current information about the availability of testing at the County Health Department, which continues, uh, still occurring Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m., free of charge, um, although not on Wednesday of this week due to the observance of Veterans Day. And we are also giving flu free flu shots on Fridays from 8.30 until 4.30 p.m. But besides these things, some additional items I'd like to share with you this evening are recommendations from the Oklahoma, recommendations for Oklahoma from the White House Task Force report dated 11-1-20. Specifically for Oklahoma, they recommend to do not, do not gather without a mask with individuals living outside your household, always wear a mask in public places, and stop gatherings beyond immediate household until cases and test positivity decrease significantly. Again, those are the recommendations from the White House Task Force report from 11-1 for the state of Oklahoma. We are continuing to see numbers rise at increasing rates, as Tyler's numbers have uh, indicated. And I did want to provide you with um, some additional information this evening on the, uh, the graph that you probably have on your screen. Um, this is from the state, Oklahoma State Department of Health weekly 
epidemiological report for the period of October 30th through November 5th, 2020. And essentially what it's showing is a comparison between those communities that have adopted a mask mandate and those that haven't in the percentage increase of new cases. And so you can see that visually in the two graphs at the bottom where the top graph is showing those communities that have implemented mask mandates and in the bottom graph the, the communities that haven't. And then those numbers are above and you can see it's dated uh, August 1st, September 1st, 15th of September all the way to November 1st. And then the first row down is the communities, the number of cases by date, and that's a seven day average. Uh, and the change in those number of cases from 328 starting on August 1st in the communities with mask mandates and those without started at 341. And then you can see the ending number of cases on November 1st, 441 cases total in those communities with mask mandates and 711 cases in those communities without. And then those are represented by a percentage either from August 1st to November 1st and the difference in increase, 34% increase in those with masks, 109% increase in those without from August 1st to November 1st. I really don't have additional information uh, to share with you at this time, but would be happy to take any questions. Mr. Member, I recognize. Yes. You would say that Mr. Walton, that wearing masks, according to your graph right here, it works better than not having a mask? That is exactly what the data suggests, Counselor. Just want to make sure I'm looking at this right and you, you know, that's what I thought. Thank you for your report, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Walton. Turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And Mr. Mayor, I have one more speaker, Michelle Keeling from St. Francis, Muskogee. I'd like to introduce. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, good evening, Mayor, City Councilors, and the other speakers. Thank you for having me tonight. I apologize I couldn't be on site. Um, and I also apologize I'm not able to present any data um, visually. But following Doug and Tyler's presentation, the data from St. Francis Hospital uh, and Health System is showing the same trends that is reported um, both on a city, county, and state level. As the mayor mentioned, uh, St. Francis Health System uh, has reached um, its highest number of inpatient hospitalizations just within the last week. Uh, perhaps one of the most concerning data points is the percent positive uh, patients that we tested on Friday of last week was 27% positive, which is the highest positivity rate uh, St. Francis has seen since the beginning of the pandemic. And as the mayor mentioned, uh, today in our ICU in Muskogee, 60% of the patients are COVID positive. Uh, yesterday in a 24 hour period in the emergency room, uh, nine patients tested positive. Uh, so from a local perspective and a health system perspective, uh, we are concerned. Our um, ability to maintain our workforce is challenged by the number of positives uh, in the community not as much as the healthcare workers becoming positive, but as their family members uh, become positive, then those healthcare workers are quarantined, sometimes for an extended period of time before they're able to return to work. So we are um, very supportive of the mask um, recommendation as stated by Mayor Coleman. Are there any questions for Mrs. Keeling? Yeah, Ms. Keeling, this is Councilman Ivory Van. How are you tonight? I'm, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. 
So your recommendation from the hospital and the CEO in Tulsa, and you're, your, you're, you're the person here in Muskogee, your recommendation here to us tonight would be to mandate, uh, mandate for masks here in Muskogee. Is that correct? That is correct. And I am so glad, Ms. Keeling, that the hospital gives us that advice and because I've been trying to, been fighting this problem a long time now. This makes the fourth time. I don't care if anything comes out of this tonight, we got to have a mandate. Because you can't see it, Ms. Keeling, but in front of me while I'm looking, it's a coffin. And when you get to, some COVID-19 affects people different ways. But when you get to this COVID-19 where you down and on the ventilator and you can't survive, that's what this coffin right here is in front of me for to remind people death is real. And I wish you could see it. Matter of fact, I may send you a picture of it. But that's, that's one of the props I brought tonight, just to get people's attention that COVID-19 in Muskogee, Oklahoma is real. It's real all over the, all over the United States. So thank you, Ms. Keeling, for your uh, letter, you, uh, email you wrote me, wrote us last week. And just thank, for you, thank you for doing a great job at St. Francis Hospital here in Muskogee. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, that concludes my update. I'd like to turn the floor back over to Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller? Yes, sir. Um, that is uh, the report that we've got. Uh, I do understand that the City County Task Force met today during the noon hour, and they may have a report, but I'll turn it over to you uh, as chair of the meeting to, to navigate where we go from here. I'm going to invite District Attorney Orville Loge to the podium at this time. He'll give us his name and his address. He is the co-chair of the Muskogee Joint City County Task Force, and he will give us remarks at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of the council, the City Task Force, City County Task Force met today, and uh, we had lengthy discussions and we've had lengthy discussions about the mask mandate. That's probably been one of the most um, talked about or debated issues for our task force is the mask mandate. Um, and, and we come to a consensus today. I'm not gonna tell you that it was uh, unanimous, but it was a consensus of the majority of our task force that the mask mandate uh, for the city of Muskogee should be uh, put into effect, that it should go um, towards the individual as opposed to the businesses. And, I'll, and with, with the exception of um, those that can be exempt from a mask mandate, um, and I think we have 11 of them, um, this would apply to the persons shall wear face coverings when entering and while inside any indoor place open to the public or in any outdoor location with more than 50 people are gathered. Face covering shall mean a uniform piece of material that securely covers a person's nose and mouth and remains affixed in a place without the use of one's hands and or face shield. Face covering should fit snugly but comfortably against the side of the face and allow for breathing without restriction. The, one of the, the major discussions that we've had on mask mandates is the enforcement of it. What, if any, penalty would there be and who would enforce it? Um, this recommendation from the task force is for no enforcement. There is no penalty, um, there is no fine, and there is no enforcement. This is a message uh, to our community that everybody, when you go out in public in these scenarios, that you should wear a mask. We don't believe now is the time that we should be punishing people financially. Um, now is not the time that um, we should be uh, approaching them with some sort of law enforcement or code enforcement and confronting them. We think that we as a governing body um, can tell our citizens in Muskogee, we, this mask mandate is for you and that they will follow it. further want to say that we encourage the state of Oklahoma, the governor, the state health department, any commission associated with the enforcement or regulation regarding COVID-19 take all appropriate action as opposed to recommendations that we are getting from them. 
what, what I hear from the state um, is not sufficient on a state level um, to curb the numbers associated with COVID-19. We as a state, there, sh there, there should be some uniformity in our state and, and in our nation. And until we do that, um, I think it's gonna be tough for these numbers to come down. So with those two items, that, that was the recommendation um, from the task force today, and I'll be glad to take any questions. Do we have any questions for Mr. Lodge? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll be recognized. Yes. Mr. Lodge, so you said we need mass mandate, correct? Correct. Okay, you said it shouldn't be any fines, correct? Correct. If, you, if you're not wearing them, it shouldn't be any fines. Mm -hmm. There should not be, we, we, we do not believe. So anytime you have a governmental order mm -hmm. to do something, right, it's only effective if you can implement it and enforce it right? Basically, there's, there's something on the end of it that requires people to conform to that order. But we're, this is not an order for years. This is not um, something that's going to be implemented for a long period of time in our city or in our county or wherever it may be. It is for the time period to curb the numbers of COVID-19 um, and so we think people will listen to that. We think people will understand that. We don't think now is the time to put a financial burden on somebody um, in the enforcement of this mask mandate. We know that there are some people that no matter what you do, they're not gonna do it. They are not gonna wear a mask, no matter where they go, whatever they do, right? I mean, there's just some people like that. Um, I can tell you, I can give you an example of a person who went to Best Buy uh, after they put in their mask mandate. If you enter this store, you have to wear a mask. A person that purposely went inside the store just to cause a scene. And when law enforcement showed up, purposely tried to cause a scene. Luckily, the police officer did a wonderful job in diffusing the situation, got it under control, nothing happened. But that wasn't that person's purpose. That purpose was to cause a scene so that it could be videotaped and whatever they do with it, right? Now's not the time that we should be doing that. Now's not, it's just not that time. So that's, that's why we don't recommend a fine or a penalty at this, at this time. Mr. Lodge, it was a week ago. I, uh, like I said, I've done this, this, this four times tonight, that I proposed this mass mandate for the city of Muskogee. And the reason I was asking you that about the fines and stuff, because at the time, when I was proposing that, the council and the mayor said it ain't going to do any good because it don't have any teeth behind it. That's, that's the reason it didn't pass that night to say. But tonight, it has teeth on my number eight item, and it's a different story tonight. You know, but either way, we definitely, I agree with you, sir, we definitely need a mass mandate here in the city of Muskogee to protect our citizens. We both agree on that, correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lodge, for, all, for all the work you do. Thank you, sir. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Lodge? Council, what I believe we'll do at this time, we will entertain your respective comments, but we have two recommendations connected to this first agenda item that we need to take up. But I will take any comments or questions that you have before we move for a motion for either one if there are any. Mr. Um, Mayor, may I be recognized? Yes. <clears throat> so over the last few weeks, I mean, no one can deny, I mean, no one in this room can deny that it's, it's getting bad. It's getting out of control. Our healthcare system is at a point to where it is in, in crisis mode, not only trying to find staff beds, but it's in crisis mode that you know, we, we look at this as trying to protect our healthcare system as how are we going to treat COVID patients? But it's not just COVID patients that we're trying to protect, okay? We got to make sure that our hospital is equipped to take care of those that are having chest pain, you know, a possible heart attack, stroke, mm -hmm. um, 
moms that are getting to deliver new babies. I mean, guys, quarantine was in March. Those March babies are coming. I mean, it's going to get a lot busier. So we're at a time to where to not do any action is, is really the wrong answer. And we do have some proposals in front of us tonight. And no matter what we do, I know a lot of fr frontline workers, no matter what we choose to do tonight, I know that they're going to get up tomorrow and they're going to go to work and they're going to take care of our families. They're going to help them get better. And God forbid if they don't, they're going to help with that transition too. And now it's our turn as this council to do something to protect them, to protect this hospital, because if not, we're going to be in a bad position. Mm -hmm. When I was asked to join the city council in July, I had a lot of hesitancy because, you know, I, I don't know much about fixing streets or potholes or different things like that, and I'm learning. But on this, up here, I, I know a lot about it. And I'm, I'm just telling each of us that just to say no, to not do anything, just because we don't want to make someone upset is not the right answer. We're not here to make people happy. We're here to do the right thing and to protect those and protect our community. And right now, our community is in dire need for us to act. Mm -hmm. As for my position tonight, I, do, I support the COVID task force recommendations of masks for the individuals. I think that's what's going to best protect our community. I think that's what's going to best protect us. I think that's what's going to best protect our health care workers, our vulnerable parents and, and grandparents. It's just time for us to act and do something. I turn the floor back over to you. Thank you. Mr. Tucker, I'm going to ask you to correct me if I make any error in my presentation. Are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. I believe that the key differences between the task force recommendation and the one that I'm prepared to present is that one focuses more on the individual, the other focuses more on the businesses, neither of which have a penalty. Is that correct? That is correct. We will take up for consideration first the task force uh, recommendation. Uh, I will ask that it be read clearly uh, so that we can solidify what the motion is and then entertain the will of the council. Uh, Mayor, uh, that an appropriate motion in that regard would be to approve the fifth amended resolution number 2801, mandating face coverings for individuals, providing for exceptions. That will be the motion that is considered that has come forward from the task force. Uh, certainly, I appreciate their work. I'm just more on the side of making certain that we do it from the business perspective and not from the individual mandate perspective. But that being said, I will entertain a motion or further comment from the council on that item so that we can move on. Uh, uh, Mayor Mr. Cole, Mayor. Go ahead. May I be recognized? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to uh, add my concerns here to this evening. Uh, to everyone on the board, as well as to our citizens here in Muskogee. Uh, we are in a public health crisis. We're in a crisis. In a crisis, uh, we have to respond. Uh, we know COVID-19 has changed the way we do business, how we socialize, and our everyday lives. We know that COVID-19 has posed a threat to our health care systems. We just heard from St. Francis they have asked us to uh, help them in this health crisis. We know as a city, we have tried to follow the recommendations of the CDC. We have followed the recommendations of the governor, the state health department, the local health department. We have been trying. Tonight, we must act. I am happy to hear that, for the most part, that we're all on the same page when we're talking about mass mandate. And as Tracy just said, we want to really understand one thing. If you, something happened to anyone in this room right now, there may not be a bed in Muskogee, Oklahoma. St. Francis may not can take you. Tulsa is full. Oklahoma City is full. You might get lucky to get to McAllister. We lost a pillar in this community. I don't know if many know Willie Strand. But there was no room in Muskogee. They took him to Fort Smith. He passed. So these things are really serious. 
and just want to just really emphasize, we're in a health crisis and we must act. Um, as she just said, there's no rooms, short of staff. Uh, she gave us an example of showing forth when you have to quarantine and the whole family have to quarantine. I also think that we need to look at the science. Science is true. We know that COVID numbers are up and been climbing. So I asked tonight, colleagues, to do the right thing. It sounds like to me that the task force got a good plan. It sounds like the mayor has a good plan. We hadn't heard three, but I'm sure that's a good plan as well. We need to come together, put them all together, and work it where it all to the benefit of the citizens of Muskogee for our self and health welfare. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman McGee. Any other comments on tonight, or do we have someone? Mayor, I, yes. Definitely. Okay, I was uh, just needing clarification um, on the two ordinances and I, uh, the, the two recommendations that we have before us. And I do understand that number eight would actually be the one that would have any <clears throat> uh, penalties. Um, you know, my, my first statement is we're, we're mistaken. Uh, Facebook, right as we speak, is blowing up, you know, with people that's not going to wear the mask mandates. And I uh, know that we don't want to spend our police time going after uh, individuals, but we can look at places uh, that, that have the people and allow the people to come in. So I'm just wanting to get clarification of what your, uh, the first proposal is saying when it comes to the business. I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I don't want to go after individuals directly, but I think we need to put a grip, uh, grip on the uh, business locations. My proposal suggests to retail businesses that they require masks for individuals who enter into their place of business. It is set to begin on November 13th at 12.01 a.m. It expires on January 4th, 2020, because going along with what Mr. Loach has suggested, this is not a forever and a day recommendation these are set to expire, at least my understanding from the one I'm presenting, to give us some time to start somewhere, evaluate the data between now and January 4th. If it demonstrates that it is working, fine. If it demonstrates that it's not working, we probably need to take up another measure. Uh, my measure does not have fines and penalties associated with it. It does not take uh, any officer off of their jobs. It does not uh, tie up law uh, code enforcement. The business will have the opportunity to decide on their own if someone is disturbing the peace or trespassing because they're not complying with their rules. In addition to what I'm presenting on tonight, businesses have the opportunity to require, uh, to request rather a review if they feel like the uh, uh, policy change is gonna create an undue financial burden to them and they may petition that to the city attorney's office. That gives them the flexibility to still operate as a business without providing a hardship unless they identify that a hardship is taking place. It does not go after individuals, which is something that I was trying to avoid because individuals need to shop and I think the best way to target what we do is to follow suit with other businesses such as uh, Best Buy was doing or Walmart or other large boxes and suggest to their patrons as they come in they should wear a mask. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, might be recognized. Yes. Did you notice that Walmart had a mandatory mask there for a while and then they stopped doing that? Walmart is a nationwide company and they had a mandate where we had masks here mandatory in Muskogee. They found that they were unable to enforce that or work with that and they have stopped doing that. And I'm not exactly sure what makes us think that a worldwide company the size of Walmart who is unsuccessful doing exactly what we're talking about doing and then you're talking about putting the burden back on some of our smaller businesses that have absolutely zero ability to do what you're talking about doing it brings great concern to me we're already closing businesses 100 miles an hour you're talking about closing more and sounding excited about it I'm very concerned I'm very concerned about this I'm very concerned. Thank you. 
Council, do we have the appetite to entertain a motion? Mayor, uh, this is Roy, this is Roy Tucker. May yes. I uh, inter interject just a point of order? Um, you know, since since the council is talking about taking a vote on those two items, um, if the council wants, um, there is a procedural mechanism where we could discuss um, the the second item, the item following this, just so that the council is has fully been mm -hmm. briefed on all of the options. Thank you. Um, before taking action on the two on agenda item number seven. Are we if, talking about item thinking, number eight? Yeah, I'm talking about item number seven is where we're at now, but if we want to lay item number seven on the table pending discussion of item eight, then we can introduce item number eight before taking any action, just so the council as a, as a whole can have heard um, each of the three proposals, and then we can subsequently go back to number seven and vote on these uh, one at a time if that's how the body wants to handle it. I'm agreeable to that, and that will also give us opportunity to hear the uh, individuals who have signed up to item number eight so then we make our decision. We have heard all three. Is that so in that, in that regard, Mayor, um, an appropriate motion would be to uh, lay item number seven on the table pending discussion of item number eight. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved in second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. No. Evelyn Hibbs. No. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jared Creed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. We will now go to <laughs> item number eight. Consider approval of emergency ordinance number 4111-A of the City of Muskogee, amending Chapter 30, Civil Emergencies, Article 1 in general, adding Section 30-1, face coverings required, exceptions, adding Section 30-2, duty of businesses open to the public, penalty, adding Section 30-3, enforcement, adding Section 30-4, penalties in general, adding Section 30-5, sunset provision providing for repealer severability and declaring an emergency or take other necessary action councilor van yes i uh, brought this motion i mean this resolution not resolution but ordinance to the city council because i felt the last three times that i've tried to get this mandate passed nothing was happening and it's no different from last week in it than it is tonight it's the only thing difference is we got politics involved and we got different people involved. But when I brought it up here the last time, it was different. And item number eight is I believe that Muskogee, everyone needs to wear a mask when they go, like you said, uh, Mayor, when you go into public places, Walmart, uh, Lowe's, any restaurant, they, they, go, they wear them in there and take it off, as long as they have social distancing. We're in the worst state right now than we was months and months and months when this thing first thing began. But we had measures in place. Well, we closed down the businesses. And you had, you go in and you had, you know, you couldn't go in, you just had to go through the drive through But now this is the worst we've been. And we've had to frivolously fight over trying to get mass mandate. The hospital stepped up because so, you know, the last, time, last week when I was up here, about how Moses got the children out of Egypt, and the reason he done that was death came to Pharaoh's son, just like that casket down there. I brought that up here for a reason tonight. So it really can get y'all's attention. Just thank you for yo, one of your family members was laying right there right now tonight. And we was at a funeral instead of city council. It'd be a different story. But all I've tried to do is try to protect the citizens of Muskogee, bring things that I think is right, instead of getting talked about, cussed at, work for free up here. Nobody deserves that, nobody. So we just, like I said, we're just trying to do what's right. But tonight, my, it's, my theme ain't on Moses. My theme is on Noah. Noah, he told the people, it's gonna flood, the flood's coming. Mm -hmm. But they didn't believe him. So he built this big old boat and they're still laughing at him. I told y'all the coronavirus was coming and we need a mask mandate up here, but you didn't believe me. We shouldn't have to go through all this 
to get to this where we are tonight. We should have done had this in place, and we wouldn't have all these cases, maybe. And for us, we don't know when this thing is going to be over. We don't. But we definitely need a mask mandate for all our citizens, for the businesses, for the restaurants, everything that we go in. Now, when we go to the park, no. We don't need that when we're out jogging. We're not trying to shut down anybody's restaurants. We're not trying to do that. We just want, when you go in there, social distance, and you can't eat with a mask on, I understand that, but social distance. But they don't do that. I'm not calling no names on restaurants, but I drive by them, just packed, like it ain't a pandemic, pandemic here in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I don't understand it. But I'm glad that somebody has got common enough sense now to believe this stuff is real. And trust me, it's real. So Moses did, he didn't get the people's attention. I mean, Noah, Noah, he didn't get the people's attention. He just took the animals and his family. But I believe we got y'all's attention up here tonight, tonight, Mayor and Council. We got your attention, one way or another. So we definitely need mass mandates. And I don't mean to harp and harp and harp, but I have been preaching it, talking about it. But it takes, you told me last time, when I tried this last week, we need, we, no, we can't help the people, you know, you know, police, we can't do all that. We put enforcement in here, and that's what y'all wanted. That's exactly why y'all turned it down last time. Go back and look at the video. It's exactly why you turned it down, because um, we, could, we couldn't enforce nothing. But now tonight, you know, number item number eight, we got enforcements on it. But y'all don't want that. So you tell me what I done wrong last week to bring it now, all of a sudden you want, you want it. You know, I'm going to say this. When I leave this office up here, I can say one thing. People talk about me and everything, but they have no clue of what I do every day as a city councilman. No clue. Just jabba, 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 yeah, blah, blah, blah. But I do my job up here, and I've helped a lot of people in seven years. And even before that, I helped a lot of people. So I'm glad Ms. Keeling from the hospital spoke up, and the hospital do, do need help. Shortage of nurses and doctors here in Muskogee. We ain't got them. We get sick, this whole room gets sick right now. We're going to go somewhere else. As uh, Sister, uh, Councilman McGee said just a while ago, I got to go to a funeral Wednesday of a guy named Willie Granger. He's, he passed away of coronavirus, but he had to go to Fort Smith Hospital. Mm -hmm. He went to Fort Smith. There's no room in the inn for him. We ain't going to Christmas. But that's just how I feel. And it's, you know, we need to get together up here. Let's quit having all these little cliques up here. And politics, it's not politics up here with me tonight. This is about safety. I know your constituents are saying, oh, I want you to vote this way, blah, blah, blah. I had a constituent call me, doing the same thing. But I'm not about politics tonight. I'm about, I'm about doing the right thing. And they can tell me whatever they want. Whether they reelect me or not, I don't care. As long as I know that I've done right up here on this city council. I'll, go, I'll easily walk home. No problem, because there ain't no paying job up here. All we get is a lot of rah, rah, rah now. But let's, please, let's come together and let's do something on this mass mandate tonight. I'm not going to say you're going to pass my item, but I just brought what you wanted. And evidently, you don't want fines now. I brought what you wanted, but you don't want it. I don't get it. Is it, is it me? Is it the messenger? Is it the messenger? Because when other people speak up up here, it's totally different. What am I doing so wrong? It makes my heart hurt how y'all feel about me up here. And all I'm doing is trying to do right. And Councilman, I listened to you deal on the uh, Mr. Thompson show today about the kids on the bus. The school system. Look at the school system. Those kids. When I got on that bus, I told y'all that they all had their mask on. Every one of those kids had their mask on. So I'll quit harping, but that's just my spiel for tonight. I am tired. When I say tired, I'm tired having to deal with this up here and deal with the, just me as me a person, the way y'all treat me up here. Yo, yeah, I'm mad tonight. I'm going to tell you just what I think. 
Well, you put me off the council tomorrow, it don't matter. I can go home. People on Facebook talk about me all they want. I can go home. I don't have to be here. But I'm here tonight for right. That's why I brought that coffin. Because that coffin represents something. That could be my family member, y'all's family member. I'm trying to get y'all's attention. Please, do the right thing tonight. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Van, we have eight members of the public that have signed up to speak to this item. I will can, call them. Can I, can I go ahead before you call those up and yes. get deep, deeper clarification on what uh, item number eight is? We won't know until Roy, Roy reads the motion, which we were going to do after we hear from the public. That's fine. Well, okay. Mayor, uh, if you want, I can go through the specifics of the ordinance, or I can do that later. Let's if hear from the want. public first, and then we'll hear all of that when we're ready to vote, so it'll be fresh in our memory. Uh, the first person we have signed up to speak is Jade Day. Uh, she is on the call. I'm going to ask that you give us your name and your address, and you will have five minutes. Is Jade Day on the line? Jade Day, please. Hi. There you go. Thank you. Please give us your Hi. name and your address, and you have five minutes. My name is Jay Day, and I live at 3513 Chandler Road. And um, I want to thank you for the time to speak at this very important issue. I'm a lifelong resident of Muskogee, born and raised, and I'm an advocate for those with disabilities and rare diseases. My, my soon-to-be 13-year-old son has FG1 syndrome. He has been isolated from the public, from everybody, essentially, since March 13th. And he has been sad. He sees around the world, we have friends around the world, people wearing masks. And he looks out in his community, and very few wear masks. Very few take the notion that we as a community must stand together to fight this. We can't be our little bickery, selfish people. We have to stand as a community to defeat this, and a mask mandate will help. It's a tool. It's not the whole puzzle. It's a piece of the puzzle to slow the spread. My son is essentially held hostage by a community that does not really care very few actively wear masks and our leadership to be honest failed to lead they pass the buck and we wait on the state to do the right thing when the state is not going to do the right thing and i'm asking as a citizen who my roots go back to the trail of tears generational to this area i want m my city's leadership to stand up and lead that is why you're elected to make the hard call. Mm -hmm. You're not always going to be everybody's hero, but you can be a 12 year old boy's hero right now because he is isolated and held hostage by this virus. And it's breaking my heart as a mother because how do I explain to my son that we can't slow the spread because people don't want to act right? So depending on personal responsibility, it's not working. We've done this eight and a half months of personal responsibility. It's time to act. It's time to lead and be the hero for the little boys and little girls like my son, because there's more children in this community who have syndromes and health concerns that have isolated them. It's not all about the elderly and our elders it's about the young people and they're going to grow up here and they're going to live here and they need to know their community cares thank you so much for the time to speak and i appreciate it and i look forward to seeing the outcome of the vote ms day thank you so much for your concern we appreciate you as well the next person having signed up to speak is Christopher McGreer. I'm going to ask that you come to the microphone, give us your name and your address, and you will have five minutes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. My name is Christopher McGreer. I live in 41 
hundred rector up in Honor Heights. And uh, I appreciate your passion that you have. Uh, in my 30 years in the military, I uh, had the opportunity to be uh, work in biomedical ethics. So when I start looking at things that go on and I start running numbers and things like that, I looked and I saw that, you remember when we first started, you couldn't get a COVID test unless a medical person said you had COVID. You know what their graduation rate in which they got? They were 30% success. They were 70%. And I hope there's teachers around here because I want to know how many teachers will give somebody a passing grade if they get a 30. But that was a passing grade in our state. I studied four states, in particular in our state, of course, one. So when we look at it, and what happened in August and in September is that the White House staff said, we're going to change some things. And now we're going to let doctors, without verification, we're going to let doctors to go ahead and say, that's COVID. You look at the graph, that matches. But remember, the doctors, when they said it's COVID, their 30% is their passing grade. And that's not passing in anybody's book. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at, if we go to Sweden, they did nothing. And of course, the news says all this stuff about Sweden. They don't have a second spike. They don't have a second. They had their initial, they let it go, and they let it run. People die, and I appreciate everyone who's concerned about the loss of any life for any reason. If you're over 70, you'll die of dementia at a higher rate than with COVID. Those are the stats. It's not my opinion. If you're below 29, you'll die of a lightning strike versus COVID. If we go ahead and we look at the hospitalizations of people below 29, they don't fill the hospitals. So the question is, why are the universities and all the colleges and everything shut down? They don't fill the hospitals. When you look at shutting down Frank, Frank, uh, St. Francis, which you did, how many people did they lay off? And I know a couple people, and I'm guessing 300 something. Why do we have limited beds? Not because we don't have a bed, because we don't have somebody to staff it. There is a solution. There is a system of nurses and doctors that will go anywhere in the world and in the US, and they like doing that, and they'll go for three months or something like that. So if we need a staffed bed, we can bring them in. We can do that. Now, I want, OK, I'm looking at my time. Why are we using European protocol outside of Sweden? If we go over to Japan, if we go over to South Korea, Taiwan has 23 million people. It's the size of Maryland and Delaware. Now, that's densely packed. We can agree. That's how many people. I got enough fingers that have died for COVID of today. If we go to South Korea, which is the land size of New Jersey and Connecticut, it's 477 people died. And you say, well, you know, 51 million people, 51 million people in South Korea, that's Florida and Texas together. So if we follow a protocol that's wrong, what are we doing? It's like going, if somebody's from Northeastern and Tahlequah, it's like looking at how they play football and say, we're going to use that to get a championship team and not use OSU <laughs> or OU. So it's, it's picking of the right thing of protocol. We go to a country, Japan. It has 125 million people. Less people died in Japan of COVID than in Oklahoma. Now, I think there ought to be some criminal stuff on the doctors that said we're going to use a procedure that causes this result. Einstein said, doing the same thing and expecting different results means you are what? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, insane. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm looking at this, and I appreciate the passion, but when I'm looking at the death of it in biomedical ethics, I go, Does somebody, is somebody running the, running the scales like uh, Alabama or Texas A&M, and hopefully OSU, but are they running the scales? Then I'm going to use their system. Well, if you're looking at it, then we have to go and look at what they do. And if Muskogee wants to lead, 
That's what we exactly do. And don't be caught off. The hospital administrator is out to make money. And if he can suck it from you and us, he'll do that. Mr. McGrew, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you for Appreciate your time it, Mayor. tonight. Yes, sir. Next uh, to speak is Mr. Kenny Greer. I'm going to ask that you come and give us your name and your address, and you will have five minutes. Hi, my name is Kenny Greer. I reside at 3301 Chandler Road. Um, nothing against you, but I know Michelle Keeling very well, and um, yes, profits are important to her, uh, but she truly cares about everybody's health. Uh, what I want to concentrate on tonight and look at is the effect of anything that you implement that's going to have on small businesses. We've taken a hit. Um, I don't know what restaurants you drive by that are packed, but mine's far from where it used to be at the start of all this. Um, I, I think, and I don't know who all's on uh, the, the task force with Orville, uh, but I haven't been asked much from anybody about COVID, how it's affected my business, and we act like not being able to seat people for seven weeks. Ah, it's no big deal. We just didn't see people for seven weeks. Um, they just, they were able to go through the drive through. Um, so there's a business standpoint to this and there is a health standpoint to this. And I fully understand that health succeeds any dollar amount. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ivory, I don't know that we need a scare tactic. This is the third coffin I've seen since I buried my mom on August the 3rd. I didn't need a scare tactic. I don't need a councilman that kneels when the Pledge of Allegiance is being said. Now everybody's got a right to do whatever they want, but we've got a Veterans Day coming up, and I think we need to respect the people that have fought for the right for you to kneel during the National Anthem and speak out against our, our, our government. Uh, Y'all have got a big decision to make. And when you start putting cash fines on businesses for people that walk in, I can't even hire enough people to staff my restaurant. Sometimes there's not someone which I don't like. I like for every person to be greeted at my door. But there's not someone there to say, oh, oh I'm sorry, ma'am. You don't have your, your mask on. You can't come in here. I think that we need to look at the health side and we need to look at the business side. And maybe you have, and maybe you've made your decision. I appreciate each and every one of you. Ivory, I've heard you four or five times and they say this is a non-paying job. You knew that going into it. I'm trying to do mine as a paying job and mine's a non-paying job and mine's about 16 hours a day, 14 to 16 hours a day. I appreciate each and every one of you, but I need butts in my seats and I need those butts in those seats to be healthy. So how we go about this, we've all got to get on the same page or give or take a little bit, but, but assigning a monetary fine to me or Alex or anybody else that has a business because someone came in there and we didn't catch them and, and, and I could have driven by eight, five, seven, nine, that the code enforcement could have already got them, not health-wise, but code enforcement, that, that they're, they're, not, they're not abiding by the codes here in Muskogee already, whether it be building or grass grown up or whatever. So to, to say we can do it this way, this way, and the two code enforcement people or three <laughs> code enforcement people can keep up with it, I don't think it's realistic. I don't think with everything we've got going on in our town to be sending police officers out to chase people down for, for not wearing a mask is, uh, is proper either. Uh, Y'all have got a big decision to make. I hope you've thought of everything because health comes first and the thing that you all have been trying to increase and increase and increase and we haven't is sales tax revenue. So. 
how are we going to play this? It's not a game. This is true life, real life. And uh, shameful prop. Thank you for your time. Shameful. Thank you, Mr. Greer. The next person signed up to speak to this item is Cheryl Brown. I'll ask that you give us your name and your address, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. I spoke, oh, my name, Cheryl Brown, my address, 10416 West 123rd Street South, Octaha. Um, I spoke before this council on September the 21st in support of a mask mandate for the Muskogee community. At that time, according to the Muskogee County Health Department social media page, the number of positive cases stood at 77,908 for the state of Oklahoma and 1,696 for Muskogee County. Today, November the 9th, 48 days later, according to the Muskogee County Health Department page, the state of Oklahoma numbers are 138,455 and Muskogee County 2,802. That is an increase of 60,547 statewide and a 1,106 for Muskogee County in 48 days. Those are the numbers. To the counselors who have been attempting to usher in a mask mandate by voting yes, I, along with many others in our community, thank you. Your efforts do not go unnoticed by this community. Councillor Ivory Van, Deputy Mayor Derek Reed, Dr. Tracy Hoos, and Tracy McGee. We appreciate you more than you know. To the councillors who have continually voted no, we have been doing this your way for eight months now, and it is not working. It is time to go a different direction. No one is wanting businesses to shutter. We simply are asking for a mask mandate for 30 days, for 60 days, whatever you decide, not forever. It is completely possible to walk into a place of business, to shop, to attend church, or whatever, all while wearing a mask. There's nothing to stop that. When I last spoke with you, my mother, who will be 90 years old in a couple of weeks, and resides in a long-term care facility here in Muskogee had tested positive for COVID. I'm blessed and thankful to be able to report her case was mild and she seems to have recovered. This afternoon, I visited with her through a glass door and over the phone. I asked if I could share her words concerning this issue as she cannot be here for obvious reasons to which she agreed. Her name is Lucille Utley, and this has been her experience. These are her words. The worst thing is being away from family. We can't have visitors, can't go out, can't go to a store, can't go for a ride. When I had it, COVID, we could not visit with each other. We just had to stay in our rooms. They bring things for us to do to our room no bingo, which we really miss. They've done a good job of taking care of us. Birthdays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I'll be right here because things are so bad out there. We have to get these numbers down. Strongly encouraging people to wear them, to wear a mask has not and is not working. And the last thing I would just like to add is this. Obviously, we're all partial to our mothers, but she's my mother. And I would love to be able to hug my mother, to touch her. And she has been locked down since March. And the nursing home she's at, they have been doing a, a great job under such difficult circumstances. I have no complaints about them and how they've handled it. But this is my mother. And if you've not been banished from a family member you, you don't know what this feels like thank you for your time
Thank you, Ms. Brown. The next person having signed up to speak to this item is Keith Bigelow. I'm going to ask that you come to the microphone and give us your name and your address, and you will have five minutes. Keith Bigelow, 549 South 6th Street here in Muskoka. To this mayor, to this council, I came today uh, as a business owner here in Muskogee to uh, employ you uh, as, as the leaders of our community to take a stand and uh, enforce this mandate. Uh, quite naturally, I, I'm in the funeral business, but sometimes it's very challenging. Um, we lose loved ones and people still want to have funerals. I'm of the opinion that we shouldn't be having funerals, but we don't have a mandate in place to limit the number of people anymore. However, being a business owner, I've taken in, in my small business and uh, we greet people at the door and insist that they wear a mask or they cannot come in. That's just what we do in our business. But I wanted to come today because Friday, there's over 4,700 new cases of COVID. Saturday, there's over 4,200 more cases. And I think today is over 20, more than 2,500. That's in 72 hours. 10,000 more people in the state of Oklahoma have this predatory disease that preys on any weakness that a person may have or any way that they can attack you and try to kill you. My responsibility as an embalmer is to preserve, sanitize, and disinfect a deceased human remains so that the family can have closure when they lose their loved one. My second obligation as a funeral director to is to guide these families when it's the worst day of their life, when they break, their hearts are broken and they have to say goodbye to somebody, but I have to turn around and say, well, you know, you can't have a funeral because of this pandemic. Or I have to tell them that we have to compromise to limit how many people can come or whatever the case may be. And it's very challenging to help these people that, whose hearts are broke. But the one thing that we can do, that we must do, and I know how it is to be in a political office because I serve on a school board, you cannot make everybody happy but you have to be concerned about the city and the welfare and the health first of the people in our community. And that, in my opinion, is a no brainer that we have to have that mandate. And I'm of the opinion when I listen to Mr. Lodes uh, that we have to figure out a way to hold the people accountable. If they, if they can't afford it, all they gotta do is wear a mask, there won't be a fine. I don't know how to do that. And I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm in favor of this mandate and I implore each one of you to figure out a way to get that done. We need to get it done right away because if we don't, then eventually we're gonna have to close businesses down again like it did when it first popped out. And that's not gonna be any good for the economy or anything else. So I'm just wanting to come to you today as, as a member of this community and a businessman here. I've been here for 27 years. I've served in many capacities and I've always tried to do what's right uh, according to others. So I'm imploring you to please be conscious of that fact and make sure that we at least have this mandate. It's the beginning and we, at least we can go from there. Thank you, Mr. Bigelow. The next person having signed up to speak to this item is Mr. Jack Ludwig. I'm going to ask that you come to the microphone at this time. Give us your name and your address and you will have five minutes. Good evening. My name is Jack Ludwig. I reside at 509 East Artillery Avenue in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. So good evening, Mr. Mayor and members, uh, members, uh, oh, oh, members of the council uh, for uh, giving us an opportunity to let our voice be heard regarding the mask mandate. While I may not be a resident of the city of Muskogee, I'm sure people are on Facebook saying, why does he get to speak? He's not even a resident. Uh, but I do have an invested interest in uh, for the well-being of the city of Muskogee and, uh, and the residents. I currently commit, uh, commute from Fort Gibson uh, to Muskogee to my full-time job at the movie theater here in town. I am also on staff as a youth pastor of a local church. While I do not come as a representative of those, of those two entities, I, I come as a private citizen needing the, uh, having the need to feel that I have to have our voice be heard and bring hopefully another take on this issue regarding mask mandates. Every week I have watched this live stream to see what is being proposed and paying attention and listening to what changes this council is attempting to bring to our city. While I agree that something should be done as a community to help slow and stop the spread of this dangerous virus, however, I feel it should, it should be done in a manner that honors all and most of our citizens of this city you as leaders, 
of the city shouldn't resort to fear-mongering tactics, bullying or co coercion, co uh, basic bullying, to get to get your uh, your point across by having people fall in line with what you believe in, and which I've watched many times during these meetings, week after week. As counselors, you were elected as the representative of each of these wards. While sometimes you make must, you, you, at this time you must make a difficult decision that you're gonna make very, probably some of your constituents mad or unhappy, but we shouldn't, this, this weekly ax grinding that we have week after week, it's old. And then we use empty gestures saying, I'm doing this in love. And then you wonder why people's, no one's listening to you. Because you don't get your way. <clears throat> and more and more over the last few months, I've watched people in this city wear their mask and be responsible. And like the, the restaurant owner said earlier, I'm not sure where you're seeing people not wear their masks. Because at my job, 90% of my, my, my guests wear their mask. We, we as a city must come up with something that a majority of its people can agree upon. We shouldn't punish businesses already struggling to make ends meet by pushing away potential customers because they don't have a mask or by fining these businesses by not complying with our rules. Because I believe if, if we have this item passes that will fine businesses for not complying by not turning away profit dollars to put food on their tables for their families, we'll see these businesses go away and never come back. We also need to be considerate of those with medical conditions that are unable to wear a mask for a prolonged period of time. I believe it, uh, we turn them away. We also risk that aforementioned risk of losing business. We also risk the, the, the possibility of discriminating against the, these these people because they cannot wear a mask. For example, my father served in the army for many years and we're, uh, with him wearing a mask for a, long, a prolonged period of time causes his PTSD to worsen. And the sight of many people with face coverings in the way of one like, like mine, like a, with a cloth mask, an N95 mask, or just a regular mask or what, oh, there's neck gaiters that some people wear to, make, to feel more comfortable. It causes to worsen. And then when they have an attack, they can't breathe, and the mask is constricting their breathing even more. And then also, re uh, requiring people who have been victor victims of many forms of abuse can cause their P PTSD of their trauma to trigger. My wife, for example, her previous marriage, she was, uh, she was abused for a very long time, and the mask makes her feel constricted it, it makes her relive those traumas uh, that she w w had with this man of many years. In conclusion, I feel that we should come up with a creative and effective policies to combat this virus and be an example to our surrounding communities, while not potentially being the cause of business that have to close down for good with loss of revenues and causing people with difficulties breathing to have to wear a mask at all times. We need to do this in love, not fear. Mayor Coleman's catchphrase, if you will, is be great Muskogee. And I feel we can get there, but it, not like this. So thank you. I do have ideas that I would love to bring, but uh, obviously my time is up. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Ludwig. The next person having signed up to this speak is Jennifer Hollinghead. And if I've mispronounced your last name, please forgive me. Uh, you may come to the microphone and give us your name and your address, and you have five minutes. My name is Jennifer Hollingshead, and I reside at 509 Hillcrest here in Muskogee. I am the owner of a Second Peak Boutique at 313 South York, small family owned and operated consignment shop. I've lived in Muskogee off and on for most of my life. As a small business owner, I wanna to talk to you today about why I want this council to vote no on the proposed mask mandate, or at least to remove the section that will fine business owners. First, I feel that this section of the ordinance is vague. As a small business owner, I'm wondering how I would enforce such a mandate and what qualifies as failure to do so is having a sign on my door saying mask required enough do i have to hire someone to stand by the door and turn people away who won't wear a mask if someone is in my store and won't wear a mask do i have to call code enforcement on them 
These last two things would most certainly cause me and many other businesses to have to close our doors and lose customers for sure. This has already been a year of hardship for small businesses or any business for that matter. I'm in agreement with Alex Reynolds that this is just another way to close businesses in Muskogee. If a mask mandate is made, what will the city do for small businesses? Holiday shoppers will go to Broken Arrow and other towns that don't require it. Will the city of Muskogee pay our rent and utilities when the shoppers are gone? Will you pay for our advertising begging for people to come into our shops? I encourage this council to think long and hard about what this would do to the business in our town. I'm sure many of you know someone who is a business owner. What would happen to them if they lost their business license? How would you feel knowing you were part of that reason? I understand that masks protect others, and I wear one when it is necessary. I understand why you might feel that our city needs to mandate individuals wear a mask. However, I wholeheartedly disagree with the idea of punishing already hurting business owners for the actions of individuals. Whether or not a business gets fined or loses its license, it's wrong. I ask that you remove this section from this ordinance before considering a vote. In other cities that have mask mandates, it is extremely rare that someone is fined for not wearing their mask. Why put that pressure on business owners of knowing that they have to refuse people to come into their shop? I cannot afford to have someone at my door. Um, I have two employees. We're open six days a week. Um, I, I definitely cannot afford to have someone at my door telling people that they cannot come in or yes, you may come in. Um, I'm fine having a sign on my door um, encouraging people to wear a mask. I believe that that is the right way to do it. Um, leaving the responsibility in the individuals, not the business. And in closing, I would like to suggest that if we can force people to wear a mask, we should be able to force city council members to stand for the flag. The flag that my father fought in the Vietnam War. He died, although after the war, he died with shrapnel in his ear, fighting for the flag that has been disrespected in these very meetings. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Hollingshead. The next person signed up to speak to this item is Randy Howard. I'm going to ask that you come to the microphone and give us your name and your address, and you will have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> My name is Randy Howard. I'm at 4100 Eagle Crest Drive, Muskogee, Oklahoma. I've been working in Muskogee for over 38 years. I love this town and I hate what's going on. I hate the fear that you guys are putting out on citizens. You're putting a lot of fear. But I will say this. Thank you very much for inviting me to your pity party, Ivory. That was awesome. The fines is unnecessary. I'm like one of those guys Mr. Lowe says, I'm not going to wear a mask. Not going to. If I catch the COVID, I catch the COVID. If you think you're going to get out of this world without catching the COVID, you're dreaming. This is a virus and it's going to spread and it'll go its way. But you know, what you're putting on the citizens with as far as fines and making them wear a mask when they don't want to, they have for freedom they ought to be able to protect. And I think you're invading on their freedom. Now, I just want to say this. I respect everybody. I want everybody to have a good life and be good healthy. But right now, this pandemic, I won't tell you what I really think about it, but you know, it's 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 something we have to deal with. I've had family with it. They survived it. Are the masks really going to do anything? Are the masks going to protect you? I don't think so because I've got friends that wore the mask, did the, everything they're supposed to do, and they still come down with COVID. So the masks are not going to do anything. It might give you a sense of protection, whatever, but that's what you want. Wear your mask. But if you don't want to wear it, don't try to force somebody to wear it. They don't want to wear it. 
Now, I do respect most of you guys up here, and I hope you do the right thing. But if you want to do the mask, you know, you don't need to be finding any uh, businesses. How many businesses have we already lost because we closed the restaurants down? Do you know how many people that went out little mom and pop restaurants? I've got a friend that has a restaurant down here called Back in Time. Troy operated on his window, and he averaged $100 a day. Like to put him out of his business. And he's had that business for 16 years. Be conscious of what you're doing to the citizens here in Muskogee. Use common sense. That's something I haven't seen a lot of. And I think we need to bring it back. So I've got about two minutes left, but I'm going to let somebody else have a break. But I wanted to say what I thought. Mr. Mayor, I think you're doing a good job. And most of the rest of you guys, you're doing a good job. Ivory, not so. Thank you, Mr. Howard. I'm going to ask that for the benefit of Councilor Reed's uh, statement prior to us going into these uh, speakers on tonight, Mr. Tucker, if you will read uh, the motion and the recommendation, clearly that's being presented by Councilor Van. And then after you read that, we'll take other comments from the council. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is ordinance number 4111-A, which if adopted would create uh, five new sections within chapter 30 of our city code. Uh, the first section 30-1A would mandate that face coverings be worn while inside any indoor place open to the public and outside where more than 50 people are gathered. Uh, section B recognizes 11 exceptions to that mandate. Um, you heard uh, District Attorney Loge mention um, those same exceptions in the task force recommendation. So these exceptions are the same. Uh, and those exceptions track much of what Oklahoma City, Edmund, Tulsa, and Norman have done, uh, specifically persons for uh, who medical, mental health condition, or developmental disability are recommended by the CDC to not wear face coverings, uh, young children, restaurant patrons eating and drinking, persons exercising in communal spaces where social distancing is maintained, or those from the same household, persons engaged in competitive sports, settings where wearing a face covering is not feasible, such as dental services or medical, uh, private homes, uh, offices not open to the general public, inside private or public schools unless required by the school and finally persons inside any state federal or county building unless required by that agency so those are the 11 exceptions section 30-2 uh, would mandate that businesses open to the public require face coverings for members of the public who enter in their business uh, section 30-3 would require enforcement by any code enforcement officer or other designee of the city manager, as well as any law enforcement officer. Section 30-4 is the penalty provision, which requires first that a warning be given for non-compliance, and then if the individual refuses or refuses to leave, refuses to comply or refuses to leave, then a citation could be issued, and if found guilty of the individual uh, or business would be assessed a fine of $100 plus costs. Uh, there is also a provision that if a business uh, refuses to comply and they are licensed by the city, uh, they could uh, lose their business license um, if that enforcement is also taken. Section 30-5 is the sunset provision, which ends the requirement of this ordinance January 2nd, 2021. Uh, Councilor Van, in making this uh, recommendation, has also uh, offered an amendment to this ordinance, and that would insert the following sentence to section 30-1, which states, quote, face coverings shall also be worn by any member of the police department when interacting in person with any member of the public, end quote. So if the uh, ordinance is approved, um, it will um, mandate all of those requirements that I just went through, uh, since this is the first time that the ordinance is being uh, introduced, uh, it does require six votes to pass. Um, with the emergency clause, the emergency uh, has to be voted on separately, as we all know, and that would require seven votes to pass. So 
That is the ordinance that has been presented. Happy to answer any questions. Councilman Reed, did that answer your question? I would just like to make a couple of comments. Um, first of all, on how we got here <clears throat> and um, what has been presented, there is a breakdown in communication because it sounds like that what uh, Council Van and myself have worked on is pretty much the same thing that District Attorney as well as Mayor Coleman has come together to present tonight. Um, we have attempted, you know, in, in Irish defense, we have attempted. And we went out on a limb by making this uh, presentation through the uh, city attorney's office because, once again, it's not to run any businesses out of town. That's never have been the intention. It's never been the intention that we go and chase people down who don't have masks. You know, if you don't want to wear a mask, um, you know, that's, that's your prerogative. The life that you save may be your own. The intention for this ordinance that um, Councilman Van and myself, I'm not going to throw a rock and hide my hand, I uh, helped uh, craft some of the language in this ordinance. I got a stack from just today of emails of people telling me what to do with the mask mandate. I got a stack of emails telling me how I can go and where I can go with the mask mandate and how they would refuse to wear, and it's not our place and not our call to even mandate such a thing. So with that, I know if we walk out of here tonight and make a mandate with no grid to it, those people are still going to laugh at us and they're going to walk around and say that they're not going to wear their mask. That's their prerogative. But what we were attempting to do, once again, it's not after the small business. The small business would not be affected in any way. If you have a small number of people in your establishment, that's not who this is directed to. We're talking about large <laughs> gatherings at one time in business locations that if you allow, if you allow, there are some business owners that think just like the uh, patrons. You can come in here and I'm not going to charge you, but everybody has a right to shop at your location and every dollar is green and every dollar has the same value. So if I have my mask on and shopping in your location and you allow people to come in there without their mask on, I can't shop in your location. And uh, I, I believe that that would be hurting your business. And that's the only intention that was put in, in coming up with this. We, we had no idea that we would arrive tonight and have two other resolutions on the table. And I think it's an awesome ideal. I think it's a great ideal. I feel real good. And once again, the aim, the goal, the attack is not after running businesses out of business. It's saving lives. We are passionate because we've seen caskets and we've seen people in those caskets that are in there because of COVID. And not all of them went somewhere. Not all of them was hanging around with masks off. There were some people who got it because there were some people in the atmosphere and in the neighborhood and in the area that didn't choose to wear their masks. And so, you know, seven is uh, pretty much reaching our goal. And we, you know, if we would have been able to communicate, we probably could have dropped eight. But eight is saying, uh, in response to, like I Van said, the last couple of times that uh, uh, mandate has been put before us, oh, why pass it if we can't enforce it? So this was the piece that we were trying to do just to try to put some uh, m uh, some enforcement behind it. So because it is uh, uh, not worth our time if we're not going to enforce uh, the mandate that we put out there. So, you know, with that being said, this is not political. Uh, you know, we hope that we can end ward wars because at the end of the day, we are all trying to do the same thing, and that's to live and die in this COVID time. But uh, what we want to do is try to extend our lifetime. We, we have our undertaker here today, and he, he, he told you, you know, he's open and, and available for businesses. And I know he would love to, uh, you know, to, to, get, to get bodies, but he's not in the position of seeing people die this way. And so from the heart of uh, those of us who wrote this, you know, I, I related as a seatbelt. I'm old enough to I remember when you didn't have to wear a seatbelt. You put a seatbelt on when you drive up the street because it's the law. Now, with that seatbelt on, when you crash into a car, it does not say that you're going to survive that automobile accident. But it's an attempt to make sure that you can be safe. Wearing a mask, it's just a mask. It's just a mask. It's not a punishment. 
We're not trying to degrade you, devour you. We're just trying to put a step in place that could possibly save lives. And so, you know, with that, um, I just wanted to explain, you know, I can understand our research because we've tried this and it wasn't to punish anybody, but we have just been out for the better good of our community. We love our community, we love our citizens, and out of love, out of love, you know, whatever uh, amendment that we take, I think it's a good, good uh, direction um, to take. And pretty much that's, uh, that, that's what I have to say about it, Mayor. Councilor Van, I'll give you an opportunity at this time to advance your motion and then solicit a second. So right now, uh, Mayor Coleman, I got something I need to say. You know, there's a quite a few speakers got up there. I must be doing a good job up here on this council, but they sure talked about me well. They really talked about me well. Oh man, I must be doing a hell of a job. But one thing about that casket there, that's not a scare tactic, that's for real. We got 235, uh, Thousand people in the United States got COVID? No, I'm sorry, 235 people that died that had to use a casket. That's not a scare tactic. And one more thing, I definitely got to get this straight up here tonight. The reason, the main reason that I take a knee to this flag is anywhere I go, anywhere else, I'll put my hand on my heart and I say the flag salute anywhere, but I will not. I refuse to say, to, to say the flag salute up here on this city council, the way I have been disrespected by an employee. You remember that situation? But people don't come up and ask me, why, why come you uh, get on your knee? That's the reason. This is the only place I do it, because I was disrespected from a city employee and had a city manager that wouldn't fire him. That's why I get on my knee, because I didn't get no justice. Another thing is, <laughs> The uh, resolution, ever what passed tonight, as long as we get something down in, in writing that we have a mass mandate, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Because we fought for it. And I'm going to tell the citizens that spoke bad and harshly against me is that it wasn't, this is like uh, Deputy Mayor Reed said, the last time last week they said, come up here and we voted on this and they turned it down because we didn't have, we didn't have no teeth in it. We didn't have no penalties. So we bring back you some you know, penalties for not wearing a mask, then you crucify me. You crucify me for doing right. You know, I don't get that. So like I say, you know, I'm happy with the citizens that talked about me tonight. I'm, I'm glad you did. But next time you talk about me, come to me and talk to me about me. Because y'all don't know what you're talking about. Y'all didn't know that just till I just told you about that flag. I said, oh, so I'm telling you, I saluted everywhere except this city hall. And I will never, as long as I'm a councilman up here, salute this flag in this city hall. Another thing is, the police officers here, that's another thing I've tried to get done. When you stop in the car, have them mask on. But oh no, that didn't pass either. You had to, you gotta go tell the person, the person you pull over, will you put your mask on, sir? Them officers ought to have their mask on like they do tonight back at that door. But when they're out here amongst themselves all gathered up, they don't have masks. That's another thing. So don't get up here trying to front me and try to embarrass me about something you don't know. You know, don't try to embarrass me up here because I know I'm right. I have a reason what I do. All the person has to do is just come ask me. That's it. So, Mayor, like I said, we done what we were supposed to do, and I feel happy about it, and I feel I'm, I'm so glad Mr. Lodge came up tonight, and you also for presenting what you put, put, presented. But really, we need these masks on. And that right there, that's real. That ain't no joke. That is absolutely real. And I wasn't trying to embarrass anybody. I wasn't trying to do those scare tactics. I can't believe somebody said I'm trying to scare them. That's reality. Go home tonight and look and see how many more cases we got. And look at tomorrow and see how many more cases we got. Can't got a hospital, can't, and it's full. It's reality. But you got the nerve to come up here and talk about me for trying to do right. That's pitiful. I wish those same people, I wish that ex-councilman right there would have stayed so he could listen to what I had to say. But he didn't. He got him left. Half had his mask on sitting up that mic. Almost said somebody didn't. 
but that's it's all good, you know. So, you know, I, I've done my best. Councilman Reed, thank you, sir, for helping me put this together. And thank you, Roy, also, if you can hear me, for, uh, for putting this together for me tonight, because something had to be done. And whatever it is, I don't have to agree with it, but I just want um, a, a mandate here in the city of Muskogee, Oklahoma, to protect our citizens. That's all I ask. So, Councilor Van, would you like to uh, move as presented by Mr. Tucker? Mr. Tucker, is that appropriate? Uh, yes, the mayor. Uh, the motion would be to uh, approve ordinance number 4111-A, inclusive of the amendment as discussed. And this is pertaining to item 8. So that we can be clear for the council, we will take up the other two items in item number 7 after we get through this item. So, Mr. Van, I, I need your motion. Well, Mayor, you know, I'll be honest with you. I already know what the outcome is going to be. It's going to be no, 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 no. I already know. I already know. Because I'm on it. But everything in this ordinance is what y'all asked me to do. And you know that. Everything that Roy read, you asked us to do. That's all I can say. So I'll make a motion to approve this ordinance. Do we have a second? I second that motion. It's been properly moved in second. Do we have any further discussion from the council before we go back to item number seven? Uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Murray may be recognized. Yes. Um, I listened to what Roy read with the uh, ordinance here, and just for listening to everybody, it seemed like everyone up here on this council is satisfied without an enforcement. Uh, is it proper, Roy, to maybe with item eight to uh, take enforcement out, and you got the same thing that pretty much uh, uh, task force uh, Mr. Orville and the mayor pretty much said, because I'm trying to get to what's the difference in the three besides putting in an enforcement. Um, <clears throat> Councilor McGee, the other difference um, in the ordinance versus what has uh, already been discussed with regard to the other two proposals mm -hmm. is the uh, business aspect. So in the task force recommendation, it only relates to the individual and not the business. Uh, but in the uh, ordinance that's presented, there is the mandate that businesses uh, comply as well. Uh, however, you are correct that um, if a motion could be made to um, uh, further amend the ordinance to strike out the penalty provision, uh, but at this point, uh, since the motion has been moved and seconded, uh, that amendment would not be proper. Uh, however, uh, if the instant motion and second fails to approve the ordinance as presented, a subsequent motion could be made on this same ordinance to amend it to strike the penalty provision. And then if that is seconded and voted on, then that would have the desired effect, if that makes sense. Uh, yes, sir, it does. Uh, okay. Can I ask okay. one more question, Roy? Uh, Please. Uh, I know that we did a mitigation plan for all businesses when this first started, correct? Yes, we did. Okay. Can you just kind of explain what that mitigation, the purpose of it was for? Are we still up under it or has it ceased? Um, um, sorry. I'm done. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, I apologize for interrupting. Um, yes, uh, back on our uh, first uh, emergency resolution, um, when we uh, did the joint city county um, uh, res resolution, I think it was, uh, let's see, number 2003, mm -hmm. um, we did the uh, city and county mitigation plans, which required every business to submit to a website that the city and the county had a mitigation plan which addressed uh, the recommendations from at that time the World Health Organization, the CDC, and the Health Department. Um, we did uh, require those businesses to submit the plan, uh, and if we didn't, and if we didn't receive one, then we went out and you know reminded them that this was a requirement of the council. Um, but the point of that was to ensure that all the businesses within Muskogee had a well, number one, we're educated about what the CDC and WHO and Health Department recommendations were, okay. and to ensure that they provided necessary uh, sanitation protocols, um, uh, posters, um, which 
alerted people to stay uh, six feet apart um, and to, you know, sneezing and, and coughing etiquette and those types of things um, to require those. And, and, you know, at that time, it was very successful. We had almost 800 businesses that submitted those mitigation plans. Uh, however, as time passed, um, the governor uh, announced the hours plan, which was the open up and recovery plan. Um, and that set uh, deadlines for opening the um, uh, essential businesses and then you know salons and, and mm -hmm. uh, bars and, and things like that. And then as of June 1st, uh, everything else opened and uh, none of the same requirements for limitations on gatherings, which was 10 and then it was 25 and then it was 50. So all that went away as of June 1st. Okay. And so uh, in a subsequent amendment to resolution 2803, I think it was the fourth amendment, which is the one, the one that's currently in effect, mm -hmm. was when we recognized the governor's hours plan and it removed um, the uh, requirement that uh, individual businesses maintain those mitigation plans. Because at that time, um, the governor declared that you know, all businesses would be open. Thank you, Roy. You're welcome. Well, can I ask you a question? Please. If I uh, withdrew my mo uh, motion and uh, Deputy Mayor Reed withdrew his second, can we do it that way? Uh, if I recall correctly, um, the mayor had already restated the motion. And so under Robert's rules, which uh, the council has adopted, once a motion is restated by the chair, in this case, the mayor, then it uh, becomes the possession of the body. So um, the movement and the person who seconded have no further control on it. And so uh, in order to effectively withdraw, what you would do when the vote is occurring would be to vote no. And then uh, once that happens, then a second motion can be made, uh, such as Councilor McGee is recommending, to strike the penalty provision. And then that would be voted on. So on this motion here, I can vote no and restate it, correct? Uh, you can vote no, and then if it fails, you can restate it. That's correct. Okay. We'll do that, Roy. Okay. We've had conversation with the council. Let me say to all of us tonight before we move on that whether one passes or all three fail, let's remember to try to practice the courtesy of consensus with one another. Certainly, this is a subject that uh, draws ire and emotion. We will not all agree, uh, but let's all agree not to be disagreeable or move to the point where we can't get along. We've had a motion and a second. No further discussion. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? No. <clears throat> Tracy McGee? No. Stephanie Morgan? No. Alex Reynolds? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Jamie Stout? No. Ivory Van? No. Deputy Mayor Jared Reed? No. Mayor Marlon Coleman? No. I believe we will restate a motion at this time. Uh, thank you. And an appropriate motion in that regard would be to approve ordinance number 4111-A uh, by amending the same, striking all penalty provisions. Do we have a motion? I want to make a motion. Mr. Uh, Excuse me. Um, Mr. Uh, Mayor, go, please proceed. This is Mike Miller. I would like to, uh, it was a question earlier I'd like to address with, with the appropriate right ahead. time about the differences. Um, there is one difference also, uh, Councilor McGee asked what the differences are between this motion and, and if, if we strike the penalty clause, I think and Mr. Tucker um, explained well one of the differences. I think another difference is uh, the um, item requiring the police department to wear uh, masks in all interactions with the public. That is a difference uh, that I think should be pointed out um, because the, that was a question that Councilor McGee asked. Um, so the, uh, by striking the penalty provisions, um, I believe that the, the motion still, or the, the uh, it would still contain the amendment allowing uh, or requiring police department to wear masks. So I want to make that, um, that clear as a difference between the proposals. Say that again, Mr. Miller, you were stuck a moment. I couldn't understand you. All right, is this, uh, is this better? Yeah, that's better. better mm -hmm. I apologize for any technical issues that we're having. Uh, is that clearer? Can you hear me better at this point? I can hear you better. Okay. Uh, really, the, the, the question is, um, 
to Councillor McGee's uh, request for um, what the differences are between um, this motion and uh, what was put together by the task force. Um, the task force did not have a recommendation for having police wearing uh, masks in all interaction with the public. And we've had that discussion at the council level uh, several times before. Um, there are uh, officers present. Um, if that's something that needs to be addressed yet again, um, uh, they've given reasons why they, uh, it is not common practice uh, for police. And so um, I, I just wanted to point that out that, that having that in this motion is a difference between what the um, council uh, is presenting and what was presented by the task force. Okay, I understand that, Mr. Miller. But to me, it makes a difference when an officer walks up to someone to their car and when they're out talking and come and go, it's like la la la, they need to have their masks when they're standing right next to each other. That's all I'm saying. We set an example in this room tonight that we all have masks on. That's the only, that's the only thing that I'm asking and requesting in this ordinance also, that our officers do the right thing. They don't want to take that stuff home to their families. That's, that's the only thing that I'm asking is different. And I think it should be different. It shouldn't be the officers going into somebody's car and then the people have to tell them, well, you put your mask on. That shouldn't be. That's not right, Mr. Miller. That's my only objection right there. I mean, it's, it's just not right. It don't hurt to put that mask on. Now, when you're running, I can understand. Take it off. Go chase them, get them. But when you're going up to somebody's car and, it, and it's, it's, as much virus as we have here now, it's important. We're, we're, we're trying to help the officers also. I don't think um, Mr. I Miller was. That. I appreciate I your understanding. Mike, I, just to make sure I don't, I don't we think he was disagreeing with you. I think he was just making clarity. I'm just, that's what I'm, I, want, I want to make sure. because yeah, I, I have, Trust me, I have nothing against the officers trying to put them on the spot or try to embarrass them or anything like that. Only thing we are doing is trying to protect them and our citizens. If we're going to do follow our rules up here, they need to follow the same rules. There shouldn't be no difference. We are councilmen and mayor up here. We make the rules. So we have a motion. Do we have a motion on the amended policy? Mayor, let, if I may, um, uh, I can recast that motion just to make sure that it is clear that it does include yes. um, the prior amendment. So um, what an appropriate motion based on the discussion I think would be is to approve ordinance number 411 4111-A with the following amendments. Number one, adding a requirement that face coverings be worn by any member of the police department when interacting in person with any member of the public. And two, striking all penalty provisions. Do we have clarity, Council? Now we will take a motion. Can I ask one more question? Roy, so, uh, with what we're presenting right now, would this be considered an ordinance that would require six votes? Yes. And so if we went back to seven, that would just be a resolution and it would require five votes. That's correct. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion and a second? I'll make the motion, Mayor. We have a motion from Councilor Van. Do we have a second from the council? I second it. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? No. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? No. Alex Reynolds? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Jamie Stout? No. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? No. The item does not pass. We will return to item number seven. Mr. Tuck, I'm going to ask that you restate the uh, motion in form of a uh, re of the recommendation from the county task force at this time so that we can take it up for consideration and vote. Uh, absolutely. One procedural matter first, Mayor, uh, moving back to item number seven, uh, we do need uh, a motion to take item number seven from the table, procedurally speaking. I make a motion to take it from the table. Second, procedurally speaking, any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? No. Alex Reynolds? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Jamie Stout? No. Ivory Van? Yes. 
Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. You have four no's. The, the item passes. Now, Mr. Tucker, we return back to number seven. Seven. Yes. And you and will so, give us the recommendation from the task force so we can take a motion and vote. Yes. Um, in that regard, an appropriate motion would be to approve the fifth amended resolution number 2801, mandating face coverings for individuals providing exceptions. Do we have a motion to proceed as presented? Okay, now let's get an understanding that yeah. this yours or is this the county's? That is the county task force. That is not what I'm presenting tonight. Can we combine? Um, Deputy Mayor, uh, if I may just uh, quickly run through that. Um, what is being uh, presented as the task force recommendation um, would require um, uh, the wearing of face coverings um, for all individuals as well as um, any members uh, who are, excuse me, or for folks who are outdoor in an outdoor location where there are more 50 people uh, gathered, uh, face coverings is defined. And those 11 exceptions that we talked about in the previous ordinance um, uh, under the ordinance are included in the resolution. Um, there is a provision which says that there is no specific penalty uh, for violation of this mandate. And so that is the task force's recommendation that is up for discussion right now. I just want, I just want to make sure we're clear. So what, what the difference is, and, and I, I know that everyone is sick of going back and forth, but what the recommendation is uh, with Marlins is that when you go inside of a business, that's the, uh, the difference in between here is when it, you go inside a business, it is required to, to wear a mask inside those business locations what the task force is, is all citizens wear all the time. Is that correct? Uh, Deputy Mayor, that is correct. With um, Mayor uh, Coleman's recommendation, uh, the burden of enforcement falls to uh, the retail businesses uh, to require that face coverings be worn within their businesses. Um, the task force recommendation uh, does not uh, regulate um, only retail businesses, it requires all persons to wear face coverings when inside any indoor place open to the public. Roy, oh, Ms. Mary, I'll be yes. recognized. Yes. Roy, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Can these two be put together and let's quit playing with each other up here? Can we just get the task force and Mayor Coleman's together with the businesses and the individuals? It's time to go home. Let's, let's quit playing. Is that, is that fine with everybody here? I mean, I know y'all didn't want mine, but I know you, I know you want uh, Mayor Coleman and Mr. Lodge. I want theirs together. Please, let's do something. Let's get this together here. Let's go home. It ain't that hard. Put them together. Can it be put together, Roy? Yes, you know, it, it can be put together. Um, the only uh, distinction we'll need to uh, figure out is the effective date. Um, because with the mayor's, his effective date is Friday. Um, with the task force, it is at midnight tonight. So, let you know what. Otherwise, we could certainly combine those those two. We definitely need to get at midnight tonight because COVID ain't going home yet. It's still laying in that casket. So, can we put these two together so we can go get going to go on the other business and quit quit playing with our citizens like this? Back and forth, back and forth. I just don't get it up here. They both got good ideas. Y'all don't care nothing about mine, but I'm for them. Can that happen? You said it could, right, Roy? Uh, if someone makes that motion, yes. Mayor, would that be all right with you? No, uh, simply because what I want is to have the businesses be able to do it with the flexibility that I'm providing versus having a mass mandate for every individual. Mayor. <laughs> You know, I know you're going to run again, but let's stop the politicking up here. Let's get down to business. That's, that's all it is. It's all this is about is politicking. Well, I'm going to get reelected again. We got citizens' lives in our hands on this vote. You're going to get individuals, but you're not going to get the businesses. Let me be clear to you. Be clear to me. The only one politicking up here is you. Seriously. You. Seriously. I don't call you out when you have a difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. It's yours to have. 
You don't know if I'm running for re-election or not. But when I do something for the citizens of Muskogee, I don't give a hot chocolate about re-election. Thank you. It's for their benefit. I spent day and night trying to come up with a resolve that helps people that doesn't hurt business. So when I say mine is different from the task force, it is different. We've had that conversation. I didn't bring a casket tonight. I'm not politicking. And COVID ain't lying in that case. All I'm trying to, all I'm trying to do, is find a happy medium for everybody so that we can get along as a city. So, it's offensive when you call me out because I have a different opinion. I don't call you out when you have a different opinion. I don't accuse you of being a politician when you have a different opinion. I don't even accuse you of being wrong when you have a different opinion. That's your choice, and that's what I meant earlier when I said, let's not lose the courtesy of consensus. Where if we don't agree, we just agree to disagree, but not be disagreeable, Counselor. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, I apologize to you, Mr. Mayor, if you thought I was, uh, I'm up here trying to politic, which I'm not. But I was just trying to get both, both of us, well, both of y'all, where we could have something together. That's all I was asking. I wasn't trying to be rude. I apologize if I was trying to be no, rude. No, no. I apologize. I just want to be clear. You know. But I, I know we need something. We need it done. Yes, sir. You know. So where are we with the motion? I'll make a motion to proceed with the COVID task force recommendations of a mask mandate for the individual. We have a motion. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? No. Alex Reynolds? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Jamie Stout? No. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jerry Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? No. We have five no's. The motion does not carry. We will now move on to the item that I had recommended earlier. Mr. Tucker, should I read it again or should you read it again? Oh, I'm happy to. Uh, a proposed motion uh, for uh, your recommendation would be to approve a fifth amended resolution number 2801 mandating retail establishments require face coverings providing exceptions and for the record mr tucker you clarify me if i'm wrong on my own presentation uh, this does not have fines and penalties for businesses that is correct this does not uh, cause any uh, policing or uh, overburden on the uh, police officers or code enforcement in muskogee that's correct um, the requirement in this uh, provision does allow a business however uh, if they're dealing with a customer uh, who refuses to wear a ma mask to be able to um, uh, ask that person to leave and if they fail to to trespass them and then they they can call the police in order to enforce that provision and the but primary that's, that's totally on the business to do, to and do one of the primary goals I set out to with that uh, language being in this uh, amendment to the policy was to give the business that discretion and I think we accomplished that tonight I move for approval second it's been moved in second do we have any other discussion yeah I do yes on this here Roy so the mass mandate wouldn't wouldn't be affected to everyone right just the people in the businesses that we go in that's it uh, that's correct cancer then just the businesses that we go in like Walmart clothes that we have to wear a mask but being yes, anywhere sir. else, there's no citywide mandate, right? Uh, that's correct. We ain't done nothing tonight. That's all I can say. Ain't even got a, a city mandate just for businesses. Pitiful. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mayor. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? No. Alex Reynolds? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Jamie Stout? No. Ivory Van? Definitely no. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item fails. Five no's. The item fails. I'm going to do something a little different on tonight. I believe that the uh, casket councilor van was relevant to the two items that we've had. I'm going to motion to recess so that we can move the prop and go on with the rest of our meeting after that. Move for approval. Second. Second. 
It's been moved in a second that we uh, recess so that we can uh, remove the prop and then get on with the rest of the business of the council roll call. Mayor, uh, Mayor let, me, uh, let me interrupt. Uh, when we do a uh, motion to recess, we need to state when we're going to reconvene. Say that one more time. Uh, now that we have a motion to recess, we need to include uh, in the motion when we're going to reconvene. So, for example, um, uh, the motion would be to recess and reconvene in 10 minutes. Can we modify the motions, please? Yes. Uh, move for approval with reconvening at 10 minutes. Just say 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Second. We have motion and a second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? No. Nope. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. We will recess and reorganize ourselves at this time. We will now reconvene from uh, recess. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Here. Ivory Van? Here. Jamie Stout? Here. Evelyn Hibbs? Here. Alex Reynolds? Here. Stephanie Morgan? Here. Tracy McGee? Here. Tracy Hoos? Here. We're all accounted for. Several of us have removed our jackets, not because we're hot under the collar, but because we're having a severe malfunction with the heating and air system. So please <laughs> excuse us for our uh, <laughs> lack of apparel decorum. Turn Item number nine. 80. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of resolution number 2835, amending the land use map regarding property located at North 3rd and Martin Luther King Boulevard, more particularly described in the resolution from single family residential to downtown Muskogee, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the land use map of the city to reflect said change. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, this is a request to amend the land use map in order to hear a, a zoning request to um, bring the property up into um, compliance. It is uh, the amendment from single family residential to the downtown Muskogee. It is allowed for, like I said, to allow for the rezoning to be presented. It is located at North 3rd and Martin Luther King Boulevard. It's the vacant property that is across from the Martin Luther King Center. And as you'll see here, the area that is highlighted in blue is the area that needs to have the land use map amended. It is currently zoned um, industrial, so we're trying to get it in compliance with the existing zoning. And uh, this identifies it again. The staff, planning commission, and public works recommend approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions. We don't have any residents signed up to speak to this item. We will now close the public hearing. Do we have any conversation or motion from the council? Move for approval. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 10. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of ordinance number 4107A to rezone 110 West Martin Luther King Boulevard, more particularly described in the ordinance from I-1 Light Industrial to CBD Central Business District, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor. Council, this is a rezoning request for the Green Country addition. It is Green Country Behavioral Health and what I call it is their campus. Um, currently, the property is zoned both I Light Industrial and Central Business District, and the request is to bring it all under the Central Business District and compliance on what their use is going to be. Um, and staff, Planning Commission, and Public Works recommend approval. We happy to answer any questions. We don't have any residents having signed up to speak to this item. We will now close the public hearing and entertain discussion or a motion from the council. Move for approval. Second. We even have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy May Mayor Derek Reed? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 11. Consider approval of ordinance number 4108A to close and vacate a 20-foot utility easement within the Green Country Edition, being more particularly described in the ordinance or take other necessary action. Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor Council. This is a request to vacate 
a 20 foot wide utility easement. The easement is identified and shown, and that is the only part of the easement that is being requested to be vacated. Um, it was what precipitated the other two items. We noticed that the zoning wasn't correct. This is for the Green Country Behavioral Health to build a new medical facility and the um, subdivision review, planning commission, I'm sorry, and public works recommend approval. Be happy to answer any questions. Do we have a motion or discussion from the council on item number 11? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and approved. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy <clears throat> Mayor Jarek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Item number 12. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of resolution number 2836 amending the land use map regarding property located along North C Street from Callahan Street to Dayton Street, more particularly described in the resolution from single family residential to downtown Muskogee, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the land use map of the city to reflect said change. We will now open the public hearing, Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, this is a request, again, uh, to amend the land use map in order to hear a rezoning request for the property that's located at 400 North C. But the land use amendment will um, bring in the area that's closest to that, to the downtown Muskogee classification. The property highlighted in yellow is what is being requested to have the land use map amended. The area that's highlighted in blue is already a um, downtown Muskogee um, zoning classification. It does allow for a mixed use and a multi-story building. If the land use map is amended, it staff, planning commission, and public works recommend approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions. We don't have any residents signed up to speak to this item. I will now close the public hearing. Do we have discussion from the council? Move for approval. Second. And properly moved and second. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. Item number 13. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of ordinance number 4109A to rezone 400 North C Street, more particularly described in the ordinance from R4 multifamily residential to CBD Central Business District and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. Now open the public hearing, Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor. Council, this is a rezoning request from Portfolio Investments, LLC. They are the owners of the property of 400 North Sea. What they are looking to do, and you'll see uh, the property here is currently un under renovation. What they are um, proposing is uh, commercial on the first floor and eight units, residential units on the other two floors. The um, R4 zoning classification does not allow for a commercial use on the first floor. However, the Central Business District does. Land use spent, uh, amended and does show that. And this is the area that is now requesting to be rezoned, the um, 400 North Sea. Staff, Planning Commission, and Public Works recommend approval, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. We don't have any residents signed up to speak to this item. We will now close the public hearing. Do we have any discussion or motion from the council? <coughs> Move for approval. Second. And moved and second. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 14. Consider approval of ordinance number 4110A, amending chapter 82, utilities, article 5, industrial pretreatment, by adding section 82-352, dental amalgam discharge regulation, providing for repealer, severability, and declaring an emergency, or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller, we don't have the presence of Mr. Stewart. Are you carrying this item? Uh, no, I believe Mr. Stephen Morton is present to, uh, to address so sorry, that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you six foot eight, you hard to miss. I'm sorry. I, I got caught up in the heat, brother. It's hot up here. Yeah, I understand. All hey, right. um, Thank you, Mr. Morton. Um, I am actually going to defer to Miss Abigail Wright. She is our pretreatment specialist, and I really don't want to muddy up her puddle, if you will. So, uh, Abigail Wright will be addressing this item. Ms. Wright. Stephen. Um, Mayor and members of council, um, this ordinance 
Um, hold on, let me get, get my thoughts together. All right, so this dental amalgam discharge regulation is based off of um, EPA's uh, dental office category regulation, and it was published um, in the Code of Federal, Federal Regulations on June 14th, uh, 2017. Um, dental amalgam is an alloy of elemental mercury and other metals that's used in the practice of dentistry and con can contribute to excess mercury in publicly owned treatment works, so our wastewater treatment plant and or the environment. Uh, this regulation requires dental offices to reduce discharges of mercury into the city's wastewater treatment plant by installing, maintaining, and servicing amalgam, amalgam separators and using line cleaners with a pH between 6 and 8. Dental offices are required and were required to submit a one-time compliance form by October 12, 2020, stating their applicability and best management practices to reduce amalgam. The pre-treatment pre division of the city sent and received all one-time compliance forms from applicable dental offices in Muskogee by the deadline. Um, dental offices with existing amalgam separators are allowed to continue using them under the rule until 2027. Any new dental offices must submit a one-time compliance form and um, be in compliance within 90 days uh, before discharging wastewater to the treatment plant. And the city of Muskogee, the city of Muskogee did add, add local conditions to this regulation to allow for city personnel to inspect in dental offices, require them to submit annual maintenance records for the amalgam separators to verify compliance, and, and it allows for enforcement remedies if needed. We hope to not have to do that. And city staff has recommended approval, and yeah. I'd be happy to take any questions. The question I have is, have, uh, have we afforded the dental offices time to comment, or is this something uh, beyond our control because of uh, federal or state regulations? I haven't had them. I don't think I've afforded time or haven't had the comment on the local recommendations, and I'd be happy to do that if it's recommended. I'm just curious because okay. when we... The federal rule, they've had plenty of time to know about it. The, just, the local conditions that were added were um, we want to be able to inspect to verify compliance. The federal rule doesn't have anything in it to allow for that. And then we we ask and put in our ordinance that we that they send um, annual maintenance reports of the amalgam separators to verify that compliance. If they do send those annually, and this and my staff was going to prepare reports for that. If they send those annually, we wouldn't do inspections annually. We do inspections as a need as needed basis. Doctor Who's because you run a medical establishment. I'm only concerned that we are certain we give opportunity to comment. Am I generally anytime they're setting up their practice, they already kind of have these things in place okay. for most most of these kind of waste and materials like that. So they should know and there's a federal statute, so they Right, should. and we can implement local ordinance as needed. So okay. I just want to be sure that whatever ordinance we pass it still keeps them afloat without a right. necessary hardship. Right. Do we have other discussion from the council or a motion? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved in second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Mr. Tucker, if we don't declare an emergency, when will this go into effect? Uh, 30 days from publication. Are we in a rush? We, if I can speak, we can. Um, under our pretreatment regulations, I mean, it is a federal rule, so they're already required to do the federal part of it. And then if we have 30 days, that's for the local constraints. I just want to be sure every opportunity is there. What says the council? On the motion to declare an emergency, or should we wait 30 days? I think we tired, whatever you say. <laughs> what do you recommend? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it would. I'm not going to repeat what Derek said. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. Or is this for the emergency? Yes. Second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. No. The item passes. <laughs> item number 15. 
Consider approval of change order number four to wastewater treatment plant rehabilitation phase one, equipment replacements for l, &L construction for concrete resurfacing at the wastewater treatment plant in the amount of $65,250 or take other necessary action. Mr. Morton, I see you this time. <laughs> it's nice to be seen. Uh, Mayor, members of council, this is for uh, concrete resurfacing at our uh, raw water uh, sewage pumping station at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, they ran into some unforeseen circumstances, uh, unfortunately, when they were removing the concrete uh, in the bottom of that uh, wet well. Um, they, had, they had to remove more than what they had estimated they were gonna have to. They kept finding uh, bad concrete and that had to be replaced. Therefore, we have to resurface more concrete than what was initially intended. Uh, there, the uh, contract does allow for this. Uh, the contractor is also asking for an additional 60 days, and that is also allowed, and staff recommends approval. Do we have questions from the council or a motion? I'll make a motion. We have second. a motion. In, wait, council. No, I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 16. Receive update on Connect Muskogee Project and take other necessary action. We don't have the benefit of having Mr. Wilkerson here on tonight. Uh, Mr. Mill, I don't see. Oh, Doug Walton is going to. Are you waving your hand, Mr. Walton? Come right on up. Mr. Walton will make that presentation at this time. Hello again, Mayor and Council. Um, I think if I had known all that would take place, I would have suggested we do an update at another time, but I'm glad to, very glad to be with you this evening. I really just wanted to uh, let you know what was happening with this project. It's a planning effort to get the public's input on identifying priorities for public transit, sidewalks, trails and, and bikeways in Muskogee. Some of you may have seen the um, uh, insert that was in the recent water bill, um, went out, uh, is still going out I think for the next couple of weeks. It's a, it's a project between uh, Parks and Rec, Muskogee County Health Department, uh, OSU Extension, uh, Muskogee Transit and others. Uh, I'm borrow this. And so uh, it began recognizing that we had a great, uh, Trails Master Plan for Muskogee that was developed in 2004. Uh, really, um, it was quite a process, um, involved a lot of different people and a lot of different um, gathering of input about the needs and the opportunities for trails in our community. Actually laid out a plan with over 52 miles of trails proposed within the city and over uh, 15 miles of on-street bikeways. <clears throat> um, many of these uh, have been, uh, have been implemented since the trails plan was developed in 2004 and um, in the time that our uh, aim infrastructure committee uh, formed in 2012 we uh, basically helped the city develop a map of the current trails and the bikeways um, this is available on the city parks and rec webpage as as well as in a folding pocket version that's in the chamber and throughout the community um, it shows where the uh, where the trails are and and the the on street uh, bikeways the 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 lane the bike lanes and the share the road lanage those are the red lines that uh, are on on the streets uh, in in front of you but you can see they're somewhat fragmented uh, in their in their connectivity they've been installed basically as streets have been resurfaced and um, and and needing to be restriped and have had the um, opportunity to determine if they were suitable for, for on-street bikeways, but not really done in, a, in, a, in an integrated sort of network where they connect from one side of town to the other or with each other. And that's what this plan is hoping to do is uh, identify those connections that are most in need and, and set some priorities. Also with public transit, this council actually asked uh, Muskogee County Transit to look at the possibilities for expanding services to better meet the needs of people riding to and from work. Uh, with only operating Monday through Friday, nine to five, it's really difficult. And so what would that look like? Uh, this Connect Muskogee is also surveying employers to find out about their employees' needs for transportation and to what extent transportation is a barrier 
to work or to hiring or retention. Uh, and that information, identifying where those employers are, when those times of day and shifts are that they have the greatest difficulty with transportation will help us to better look at the gaps and the priorities for improving uh, transit. This is just a, uh, a list of the different organizations that have had representation within the, uh, within the steering committee and our AIM subcommittee. Uh, really, it's been a, a, a great level of involvement from throughout the community. And then the, the, the groups I've mentioned already that are partnering together with uh, all of us to, to basically fund the planning effort. So that really, the, the fun part is that we've got a tool now. We've got a project website. If you haven't been, I encourage you to go uh, check out engagekh.com, uh, connect Muskogee. It's, it's on the fire. I've got extra copies. It's in your... Uh, it's in the agenda item. You can QR uh, scan the code right there on your screen. Um, and on the, on the project website, we've got two main instruments for getting information. A survey. Uh, we've already had uh, 117 surveys completed from the community and have through the end of November to, to, to have people basically identify both um, the, the, the challenges that they have with the current transportation system, where they need sidewalks, where they need bus stops, uh, where they need to go that they can't get with uh, these uh, means of travel, the trails, the sidewalks, the, the uh, public transit, and the, and the bikeways on street. And then also there's a, uh, a mapping tool that lets a person go onto a, a map of the city and basically drop pins as to where they would like to see a new bus stop or a new sidewalk. They can draw lines. It's really easy to do. Um, and it, it's live, uh, it's on the same project website. There have already been uh, 80 comments that have been added for, for suggestions for new sidewalks and new crosswalks and new bus stops, new trail connections, new bikeways on streets. Uh, we, we need as much input as possible. This will help prioritize the next project. Great thing about the, the uh, platform is that it allows you to go and look uh, at comments that have been added already either by clicking on the actual icon on the map to see what someone said about that location uh, and choose to like it or dislike the comment or you can also look at the activity feed on the far left uh, side uh, you can see all of the comments that have been made uh, about all of the different locations and also choose to like those comments or not uh, to, to help really uh, better identify the, the, the priorities for making improvements. Um, so again, we've got through the end of November to complete the surveys and to uh, make the web comments on the map. Uh, I have extra copies if anyone likes. I'm going to just leave these right here on the table. Grab one or, or several if you need. Um, and then all, all the information is on the website. And I'd be uh, happy to take any questions. Also, I don't want to uh, end without giving out a really big um, shout of thanks to Mark Wilkerson and Parks and Rec for really heading this up and, and allowing uh, us other partners to be involved. I want to thank you and your team, Doc, uh, Mr. Walton, because I know that was a task assembling that many people with different ideals to have a conglomerate that focus on all of those areas, uh, transit, trails, walks, sidewalks. I think that's a good direction. I think it's good news for Muskogee um, that we have that many people involved in that type of uh, vision to be certain that we start to consolidate efforts versus having separate maps. So I want to thank you for that. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Do thank we have you. any questions for Mr. Walton? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have two residents signed up to speak uh, tonight for the public uh, comments. Mr. Stephen Easley, I'm going to ask that you come to the microphone, give us your name and your address, and you will have three minutes. Uh, Stephen Ezel, 6121 South 6th Street, East Muskogee, Oklahoma. Uh, to fully appreciate the event that's up, upcoming, I want to relate to you this. Uh, several years ago, I um, read a story about a United States Marine, a homeless Marine from Vietnam who had to pawn his Silver Star Medal simply for a meal. Now, for for the record, the Silver Star is the third highest decoration for combat gallantry that can be awarded to a service member. 
And, 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 and that's kind of sad. Now, the reason I say this is because normally the Tulsa VA would be holding a stand down for homeless and indigent veterans, but due to COVID-19, they're not being able to. So uh, Paul McKinstry and I from the American Legion Post here in Muskogee, we, the ne on the 17th and 19th of next week at our post, we'll be holding a stand down event for homeless veterans. That means we encourage uh, people to bring by clothing, like say warm clothing for the upcoming winter months that can be donated that we will be giving to veterans, people who want them free of charge. We will be serving a breakfast there on both days, courtesy of New Hope Assembly of God, also donut and coffees. The time for this event will be from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. And we're also going to try to have their, either myself or someone else, forms that veterans can fill out who might have initial claims for the VA, but who haven't able to been able to get to the VA because of COVID-19. Now, there's something you need to know. Of the nearly 22 million veterans living here in the United States, about one third of them, it's about 7 million veterans, are either homeless and or live in poverty conditions. Now, this is also a situation that makes people ripe for catching COVID because persons who are homeless or indigent they aren't able to get themselves access readily available to the type of benefits such as good housing, nutrition, and basic medical needs necessary to combat COVID. Now I was, and I'm still li licensed as a medic, and one, part of our training dealt with dealing with displaced persons. And displaced persons are just as subject to illnesses, exposure, such as COVID, is everyone else. So I want to encourage the city to support us in this endeavor. If you have clothing and stuff like that, or like I said, maybe like canned goods or foods that you'd like to bring over, bring them over to our Legion post, and we will make certain that these get to people who truly need them. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. The next person signed up to speak is Mr. Paul McKinstry. I'm gonna ask that you come to the microphone and give us your name and your address, and you'll have three minutes. Thank you, everyone. My name is Paul McKinstry, retired Army medic. Uh, I'm with the one that submitted the proposal for helping the homeless veterans and other indigenous people here in Muskogee. Having listened to the conversation tonight, I would like to make one statement. Where the casket's still there, I see it as an honor to my fellow veterans that gave their lives so we could have these discussions. I've decided since I've been listening to this go back and forth, the reason that Tulsa stopped giving out the clothing to the homeless veterans this year is because of exactly what happened here tonight, that the city could not make up its mind. Therefore, I am taking this opportunity to withdraw our support for the homeless veterans. I would rather think that they would freeze to death than the possibility of having COVID-19. Thank you. Good day. Mm -hmm. Thank Mr. you, Mr. McKinstry. Uh, Member uh, Senator Rules and me uh, recognized. You may make a motion to the same. I'd like to spend the rules and be recognized for uh, not three minutes, five minutes, but it's not going to take me that long. We have a motion from Councilor Van. A second is motion. We have a second to allow him to, uh, so we can uh, suspend the rules, allow him an uh, opportunity to speak. Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. <clears throat> Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. Councilor Van, you may approach the... Sorry, Mr. McKenzie, you... Were you... Okay, I'm finished. Okay. Yes. Should you change your mind, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Van, give us your name and your address. You'll have five minutes. Uh, 
Ivory Van, 4338 Columbus Street, Muskogee, Oklahoma. I just wanted to say that there have been a lot of bad comments said about me tonight, so I'm going to reveal what's going on now. The reason I told you before, the reason I do not stand before that flag is because the way I was treated by a city employee here for the city. And he disrespected me. He slandered my name. He told lies on me, which wasn't true. But the city of Muskogee had to spend, for the investigation, they had to spend, the taxpayers had to spend $10,000 before that investigation. He got paid to investigate me. He got paid. I mean, he got to use city equipment. And that was wrong. And that, and well, our city manager, only thing he'd done to that employee was demote him. He should have fired him. He'd have been anywhere else. He got fired. So that's the main reason. So people want to know why I kneel right there. That's the reason because at the end of that flag, it says justice for all. I didn't get justice because I didn't deserve that disrespect from no employee up at the city hall. We had to make a, an ordinance. So now if something happened to y'all, y'all in good shape, but not me. So when people talk about me and don't know what's going on, come to me. But anywhere else I go, ball games, anywhere else, I'll salute that flag. But I tell you what, as long as I'm a city councilman, I can't salute that flag in this building because there wasn't no justice. And another thing tonight, I was disappointed. We disappointed our citizens. We didn't mandate do a mass mandate. That's sad. As high as these cases are, and the hospital begged us to do it. Other people used, wanted us to do it. So we ought to kind of feel kind of bad tonight. I know I do. And I saw, I'm sorry, Mayor, if I've disrespected you. I apologize. I'm not too big to apologize. And that's a fact. But just to clear the air, that's why I do not salute that flag because of the situation that I had to go through here at the city of Muskogee. And y'all didn't have to go through it. I did. And still get letters. We still we got five, six more le five letters sent to us after that. Same thing with Councilman Reed, getting shirts sent to him. That was wrong. So like I say, you know, people nowadays, they just don't have no respect for you. All them people talked about me, but they don't know what I do every day as a city councilman. I work every day hard as a city councilman. When you walk in downstairs and see all that work done down there, there was a guy named Billy Coffer who was here at that time. And I brought a plan back from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and he put it together. Don't it look good downstairs to have some type of security? Yes. Robinson Park looks good. Yes. Other places, other things I've done. I've got a list. I can go down of all the things I do every single day as a councilman. But these, these people come up here tonight and talk about me like I was a dog and wasn't nobody. That's, that's, that, that was pitiful. And that casket was just an example of what our families would go through if they get this COVID. It, don't affect, it affects people different ways, but people die from it. So that's all I got to say. I'm just, when I go home tonight, I'm heartbroken that that didn't pass. And you made fun of the casket. I wasn't trying to be funny, just trying to show you reality. That could be my family, all, 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 all of y'all's family. But don't let it home, you know. It's a saying in the Bible, what you reap, you shall sow. What you reap, you shall sow. Find those words in Jesus' name. Hey, man, Mr. Re Councilman Reynolds. Don't say it. We're not allowed discussion. Oh, Mr. Reynolds got a good understanding. I know, yeah. But, I, but I, like I say, I, I, I like to thank you for giving me this time. But I just want people to realize you know, mainly, because don't, don't criticize every van if you don't know what, he do, what, what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. Come to me and ask me. Just like that employee, all he had to do is ask where I live. He didn't have to do all this investigating on me and the city paying $10,000. Citizens don't know that, but they had to pay that kind of money for that lawyer, because I didn't want nobody around here representing, trying to find out what went on. So what you don't know, I told you tonight. Don't know, don't know, don't know. That's my word. So citizens, next time you see me kneel, it ain't because I don't respect that flag. It's because the injustice that I get up here at the city council, and the injustice I got over all, all, all the many years that I've stood in front of this mic, in front of different mayors and different council members. But you know what? God put me in that seat, and he can take me out of that seat. And I don't, I don't, I'm not jeopardized about whether I lose my seat when election time comes. It don't bother me. Because I know what I've what I done tonight and brought that proposal to y'all, I've done right. Y'all asked me for the... Uh, the number, I mean, the fines and stuff. Because there wasn't, wasn't no fines last time when I, I talked about it. But we had fines, but you still didn't agree with it. So I, I don't feel bad. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I really do feel bad because I've done all I could to do it. I've done all I could to do it for the citizens. But that's okay. Because I'm going to continue on.
as a city councilman to do something every day for somebody. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Councilor Van. That was the last person having signed up for tonight. We are adjourned. <laughs>